was great fun. And then Joe Burrows uh, smoked a cigar in the locker room, which was, uh, you know, cool for me. And uh, or as uh, Bobby Kelly would say, he was smoking a bat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> then the other guys on the teams like, give me a cigar. And then uh, security came around and started saying, you cannot smoke it. They're screaming at the guys that just won the championship. You can't smoke in a locker room. First of all, it smells like ass to begin with. <laughs> it's going to be an improvement for sure. Also, he's not a very confident cigar smoker. He is, he's, he's a youngster. He's a baby face smoking that cigar. Well, that yeah. looks unnatural. Yeah. But he looks like a baby from like the 1940s or but something. Look at the way he holds it as far away from himself as possible so he doesn't get burnt. <laughs> but good for him. Uh, a lot of fun. And um, I do hate that uh, Trump and Vince Vaughn have taken a lot of the heat from this because this is supposed to be about these kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it always annoys me when some, you know, stars do something because it's not. Neither one of you guys has anything to do with these schools. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> but Vince uh, went over in the owner's box to tell the president how much he uh, loves him. Uh, and then that got picked up uh, because liberals are like, Vince is a dick. And then Fox News is all protective of Vince Vaughn. Sure. Yeah. This yeah. is always funny to me. Uh, they hate stars unless the stars are with them. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to hate stars or want... Hollywood people just shut up. You fucking voted for Reagan. No. You just don't like the people against you. Right. And you don't have many people on your team. So you'll take them once right. they're. But remember, on your Trump side. was more of a TV star than a fucking real estate guy. Um, but I saw, when I saw this, immediately I thought, well, he's going to get a lot less shit than Ellen. I know it for a fact. Well, Ellen, I mean, the one thing about Vince, he always. Uh, Hides himself as a libertarian, which is always a funny thing yes. to me. But uh, Ellen was supposed to be. It was very funny that you bring up Ellen because I was standing out at the Moon Tower show with all these comics, and all of them started to tell me that uh, Ellen screams at people. Really? Yeah. And I said, I think everybody in show business screams at their staff. Like I've never heard of, or else you're the kind of pussy. Who has somebody do the screaming for you the way Jay Leno did? Right. You know I mean, like oh, he had yeah. a really mean lady do all the yelling while he went into the back. And then he comes back, somebody fired that Charlie, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> you're a fucking person that you're in charge of. But I do think when it is a female boss, people expect it less. So that's why people talk about it more. Like, remember, uh, they, they were, that was like the big thing with uh, Klobuchar. They were saying, oh, Klobuchar, like, We'll throw a stapler and scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, like all the other dudes who yeah, are bosses. Like everyone else. <laughs> How's Klobuchar doing anyway? I never hear about her that much. Honestly, I think she's gone, but I don't no. remember her dropping out. She okay. didn't drop out. I think she was just not. She at, can't get out of that 4% yeah. or whatever. I think she maybe just didn't qualify for the last yeah. one or something. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, after I can't remember her since she was trembling so bad. Remember? She had some nerves, and her yeah. her bangs were trembling, and yeah. then that's all anyone talked about her performance. Uh, Cory Booker is going, or as he said, I'm, I'm Cory Book it from this point <laughs> on. Uh, they have the problem that they can't get any black votes because black people love Joe Biden. <laughs> they right. fucking love Jesus. Joe Biden has something like ninety four percent of the black vote. <laughs> I think Cory Booker actually officially said, I'm breaking up with the campaign trail, but now I'm dating coffee, and it's hot, black, and sweet. Right, guys? Uh, whoa. Sexy. You remember whoa. that? No. no. I he, don't remember any of it. He we, we talked makes, about the, he makes the same joke over and over. I broke up with sleep, and now I'm dating coffee, and she's hot. Black, He's sweet. obsessed with the same fucking coffee joke. All you know over what? His it makes page. me want coffee though. <laughs> Hot, black, and sweet. No, I never pay any attention to Cory Booker. I didn't think he had a chance. I don't think you could go from being mayor of Newark and not be able to show off any bragging. You know what I mean? Sure. You got to be mayor. Where are the improvements? Of, yeah, that's what I mean. You got to be mayor of South Bend. <laughs> that guy they said only eight thousand people were in that election. He knew Fuck. each person who voted for him and each person who didn't. He's like this, Harry, come on. <laughs> I used to deliver your paper. Uh, I don't know why anybody's surprised about Vince. He's always been like a Midwestern uh 
kind of a you know dude bro, bro. yeah, <laughs> yeah on, bro. on fox news there was a scroll that said something like what's wrong with two people being inside the same box like, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything <laughs> Jesus is against it. <laughs> Jesus don't want you sharing a box. But everybody likes Vince, but you have to accept Vince yeah. for what he is. And he hasn't really picked a good movie since, what, 2005? Probably. Been a while. Yeah. I mean, he's still money. Yeah, he well, he's really so is. money, he doesn't even know. He's like free teeth and he's after the little rabbit. Baby. Um, but you don't need a lot of hits. And I'm not one of those people who gives him a pass for dodgeball. Mm-mm. No. No, I didn't. I think that was a sketch that went on too long. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I probably liked him in was uh, True Detective season two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah but you I'm know, about that. that's beneath the movie. We're talking about his movie. Yeah. comedy work. <laughs> movie, yeah. Yeah, it's easy for him to, and he played a dick in that. I mean, yeah. he was kind of dickish. He was a bad person. Um, um, I did vow to never see Fred Claus. I remember never when saw that, it. Yeah, that I saw that trailer once, and I was like, I vow to never watch it. I don't care what's going on uh, in my life. He played the small part, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I like that. Mm-hmm. Breakup, way too sad for me. It's a rom-com about the breakup with him yeah. and Jennifer Aniston. And, you know, you're just like, oh, come on, guys. No, we want you guys to be together. That's how this <laughs> genre works. And then after that, Couples Retreat was painful. Four Christmas was painful. Didn't see and it. And a bunch of these I haven't seen. Lay the Favorite sounds kind of good. I don't know. What's, what's Delivery Man? Uh, that's when he found out that he had uh, left a bunch of sperm at a sperm bank and he has 235 kids. Gotcha. I uh, <laughs> saw the trailer for that and that was plenty. <laughs> Didn't need to. <laughs> um, looks like he played Sergeant Howe on uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Are you a war movie uh, guy at all? Me? Yeah. I mean, I don't really, I don't really like... Uh... A war movie, I feel like there's a couple classics that I enjoy, but it's not a preferred genre for me. I get bad anxiety, particularly with like the graphic, you know, we're on the we're on the ground and the camera's shaking and now there's dirt on the lens. I get bad anxiety. I always like to uh, see this picture of this girl. I'm going to go back and make her my favor. I'm going to take over my dad's paint store. And I'm like, Whoa! Whoa! I did not see that coming. I think uh, the first time I saw that was in the Big Red One. Have you guys ever seen that movie? No. A World War II movie. Can't think of the guy's name. He was The last film he made, he was like an old... You got Sam it, Fuller. Sam Fuller, very good. Uh, inventor of the Fuller brush. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it was one of those movies of like they're not even going to learn the new guy's names. You know what I mean? Right. That's how fucking sad <laughs> the whole World War II gimmick was, and it was based on his stuff. And he basically said, you know, I'm fucked up from war. A lot of those guys did, which none of us realize when we're little kids enjoying playing war and watching war movies. That there were men around her, like just I gotta go in the other room. This is tricking, but they never told us. Right. They could have just yelled, "Never <laughs> believe this." So that's always the sad thing about a war movie. Chris, you've found a, a list, yes, of the fifty best war movies. Now I'm gonna open this up to the general public. It's eight four four Rock God, eight four four Rock God, and that is your favorite war movie and that to me is different than the best war movie yeah because you have to have it based on all kinds of criteria of whether it's a good film or not yeah you know uh and this uh is it 1917 yes is supposedly a very good war movie but it has those scenes that you and i it makes us sad to watch this. Yeah. Eighteen year old kids. I don't like watching children die. Yes. Yes, it's probably my biggest in a trench. issue with it. Yeah, in a trench. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No man's uh, land. Trench foot too. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see any trench foot. Uh that showed up in Vietnam. Vietnam was all about bad feet. Yeah. Uh Earl Douglas. Yes. I know you're probably going to pick a Civil War movie <laughs> with the Black Squadron. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a way to get started. Earl, what is your favorite war movie of all time? 
favorite war movie of all time is also my favorite film of all time. It's Apocalypse Now. First of all, I did not know this was your favorite Me either. film yeah. of all time. Um, this almost killed Francis Ford Coppola, this movie. there. Uh, now, what is it that makes you love this? It's everything that, uh, like, everything about war that you thought and everything that war is about. It's about the loss of basically your mind, your soul, the whole thing. You have all these different great so characters. So you think of it as an anti war movie? Um, I guess. I mean, it just it just encapsulates everything about war that's but, exciting, but, but also you know, that's no one, everyone who went to Vietnam said it was nothing like Coppola. Coppola made up almost. It's like a dream world. Yeah, it's yeah, almost it's a weird surreal, dream world. Yeah, you know, there are movies that people have seen. I won't bring it up because there's a couple that are easy to get, and I'll let right. people get them. But you know, his is like War on Acid. Which is why one of the reasons why I loved it, in that you know the whole scene with, and it's just scenes that are beautifully shot. You know the, the, the airstrike scenes are beautiful, but then you know the scene where Clean dies is absolutely heartbreaking. Spoiler. Well, it's only because you're closer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like those things that you think are absolutely beautiful, you wouldn't if they had a camera on the ground right. when they're napalming. Yeah. And right. So you probably wouldn't be like this 9/11 movie. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and the performances are amazing. You know, Brando, Duvall, uh, very young Lawrence Fishburne's in it. Uh, Martin Sheen, who almost died making the movie. He had a heart attack making the movie. You seem like you're selling it. <laughs> Literally going around selling it. Chris Stangley, yours. Platoon. Surprising. Yeah. It's, that's, that's one that I would say is a little on the nose. Although, it is. I mean, that won the Oscar and everything, yeah. but then a lot of veterans were very angry about that movie over the fragging scene. Yeah, uh, my dad showed me Platoon when I was a kid, and I loved it then. I still love it. Uh, and Tom Berenger and Willem Dafoe are just fucking amazing in it. You know, here was my only problem with them, and they're both great in the movie. They're both way too old. I really think you needed somebody 20, 21 yeah. at the most. I always thought... Sean Penn would have been good oh, yeah. in the Behringer role. And then, I don't know, you just put on anybody against them, you know, some good-looking kid in the Defoe role. But that's the thing, that those guys look like they're late 30s or something in yeah. that movie. And that was, you know, really young people in yeah. that war. Yeah, I mean, when uh, Earl, when you said Lawrence Fishburne was, wasn't he just like underage? I mean, he was like a baby. Yeah, he was. He was, he was like fourteen or fifteen when yeah. he went over, and then they shot for two years. I think he lied about his age. Um, but yeah, who was he? Clean? He was clean, and he always looked older. Old, old, throughout time, he's always looked older than he actually was. And I just thought he was. Well, like I remember a, that one movie that he played the dad in. Uh, um, Boys in the Hood. Yeah, Boys in the Hood. He played the dad, and he was probably was like thirty one or something, you know. But you see how skinny he is there. He's got yeah, a boy's skinny. He does. In that movie. Um, eight four four Rock God. Eight four four Rock God. Now, uh, Chris, in your list, I don't know who put this list together. It was Vulture. Were those two movies mentioned at all? Yes, Platoon was mentioned. Where? Number 23. It's a top 50. Interesting. Mm. Lower than I would have thought they I would have put thought, it. Yeah, because the uh, the fact that it was yeah. an Oscar winner. And I remember seeing the movie, and there was a lot of guys that would go to that movie in the green jacket. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. And you would go, and you would think to yourself, uh, I got to be a little respectful sitting here. You yeah. Know what I mean, I can't say awesome or anything like that. <laughs> it was... Uh, a little bit uh, heartbreaking. All right, let's jump into it, Gail. 844 Rock God, 844 Rock God. What about Apocalypse Now? Number six. Earl. <laughs> yeah. You're doing a lot better than Chris but Stanley. This is my you personal won. choice. Can I tell you something, Earl? <laughs> yes. You own that bitch today. What? You did. You made Chris Stanley your bitch. With that number six. Yeah. I didn't know this was a competition. Chris, yeah, you got to hold on to his belt loop for the rest of the show. It's embarrassing. Yeah. That's it's the a meeting, point. Ron. Yeah. It really makes you uh, regret bringing this list to us, doesn't it? Uh, let's go over here to Charlie and Providence. Oh, God, Charlie. <gasps> <laughs> How are we doing today? Uh, thin Red Line. 
Thin Red Line is uh, one of those movies. Didn't do well when it came out. What's the director? Terrence Malick. Yeah. All right, so Terrence Malick, he shoots these things that people, you know, you either love him or you don't love him so much. Supposedly, he's got a beautiful movie out this year that people are ignoring. Um, but it was, at the end of the day, you're like, wait, was that John Travolta for two seconds? You know what I mean? Yeah. Did I just see George Clooney go by on a bike? <laughs> and you would found out that he had shot all kinds of shit with these rugged people. But <laughs> are cut. you a fan? Oh, yes, I did. I remember when that. I was very excited when it was coming out. Yeah. And uh, I loved it when I saw it. I saw it in the theater, yeah. and I just thought it was beautiful. But I can't remember uh, things other than the visual. But that's Malik, too. You know? uh, yeah. And that, I don't know whether that helps. I don't right. know what he was trying to say. And that always happens with Malik's. Uh, Jim in South Carolina. Let's go over to Jim. Best war movie. Patton. Patton, when you're a kid, is the most seductive of all the war movies. Uh, also, Francis Ford Coppola was a writer on this. But it's got that famous uh, first scene where he's in front. And it's almost... Um, it's it's the same reason the kids like to play for a coach in football. You know, right. that thing. Uh, Patton is Donald Trump's favorite uh, general of all, of all the generals. It's, uh, he's, you know, let's go get him. We're going to push him. We're going to shove him. And it's very, very seductive. I remember being a kid and uh, loving That it. scene is so iconic, and I feel like it's the thing everyone remembers from the movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like this is the moment. Now, also no, the funny no. thing about it is, of course, this is based on, you know, Patton, but he never stood in front of this flag. or You know, right. none of these yeah. things. Exactly. The, uh, the whole idea of if you see a movie and you think, oh, that's how it was, it just isn't. <laughs> you know, the same yeah. exact thing that I said about Apocalypse Now, I'm sure everyone who knew Patton right. would say the same thing. Pull over here. <laughs> I was in a battle here back. <laughs> it's really, really seductive, right. though. It's really that's what you want to be when you're a little boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to be the fancy general that everybody. I guess respects. that's another thing is probably boys, young boys, have an attraction to Loved war it. movies. Yeah, that, like, love them all. This I is did not have. yeah. I mean, when you're a little boy, and it doesn't have to be any war. I mean, it could be the cavalry. It could be. The gladiator, you know what I mean? It could be a naval picture. It's something in our DNA, the way period romances seem to be. When right. young boys are just like, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> they killed all those fucking dudes. This is so great. It's just like, that is, until we like accept that about ourselves, it's why we keep remaking the same mistakes over and over again. Right, it's... And the, the, the truth is, people go off to war and they come back and they're like, I can't believe we were forgotten and we were treated, because they always treat troops. But if you read it all, it's the entire history of the world that we treat we yes. treat the troops like shit when the war is over. Every this single time. This happens every time. And it's, sometimes we think it's an American thing, but everybody's done it. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. is shitty. The human condition is shittiness above all else. Favorite uh, war movie of all time, 844 Rock God, 844 Rock God. Let's go to Chad in North Carolina because he and I share an answer. Ooh. Chad. Interesting. Hey, Bennington. That's an a awesome choice, Gil. Um, so my dad's a retired two-war vet from the Marine Corps and says that the boot camp part of the movie from Full Metal Jacket is the most accurate depiction of boot camp during Vietnam that he's ever seen. Full Metal Jacket's my vote. Well, we had, uh, you know, the fact is the guy who played that had done that job and was allowed to, you know, improvise right. all that stupid dialogue. It's so great. <laughs> um, but there's always been people for years who said the first part of the movie, great. Yes. Second part, not so great. And I used to say I thought the boot camp was scarier than the Vietnam scenes. But as the years gone by, I like the second part a lot more than I, I did when I first saw it. When I was a kid, I really honed in on the first part of the movie, thought it was so terrifying and haunting, um, and then kind of would kind of fall off in interest. And now the same. I kind of come to appreciate the second half of that movie. 
Um, this was the weirdest scene too when they yeah. played this <laughs> fucking weird song. Where are you on this one, Earl? You have a tendency to hate I, him as a director. I I love <laughs> everything. <laughs> Wait, I love everything. He's <laughs> trashing him all the time yeah, in the I, office. I don't right? trash it's Stanley. Good. He's one of my all-time favorite directors. Well, I really? really? Why absolutely you adore yeah. this well, movie. Why did you jump again to Coppola like you fucking love? Same reason. I didn't. I thought the first half was outstanding. I thought the second half lagged a little bit. Where's you know Apocalypse what we should now? do? I should play that uh, interview that I did about that with the kid who starred in it. Um, uh, Matthew Modine. Yeah, Matthew Modine uh, yeah. came in. I would he love had, to hear that. He had some, wasn't even a book, it was like an app that you could go through it. And that's all we talked about. Yeah. And then I did another one with Malcolm McDowell where all we talked about was the film that he did with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Both of those things are just fascinating to hear what it was like to be on the, the set for fucking Stanley Kubrick. But, you know, some of the stuff gets, you know, Lost in the fucking vapors of yeah. wherever things go. Did it make the list? Twenty the no, nineteenth. Full melt. Twenty nineteen. Higher, <laughs> higher than Chris's. Yeah. Yeah, this is bullshit. I win. Me and Chad win. <laughs> Has anybody well, even come in lower than you? No, no. one yet, Ron. Mm -hmm. Patton was twenty fifth, Thin Red Line third. What was yours? Ooh, Mine, Thin Red Line was third? It was third, yeah. People love to mm -hmm. say they love mm -hmm. Terrence Smellick. Twenty oh the twenty third. So uh, Patton was lower than me. Okay. Why did you? He calls himself Platoon. I'm Platoon, <laughs> and came in at 23rd. Chris Stanley at number 23. <laughs> uh, Ken in Boston. Hey buddies. Hey, hey buddy. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit more contemporary. I'm gonna say Finally. Brad Pitt's Fury uh, is absolutely incredible. I haven't seen this. I think it's on the Netflix. It is. Uh, is he a tank commander? Yes, he's a tank commander. Yeah. What war? Uh, World War Two. Hmm. That's the greatest right. generation. Never saw it either. What do you like about it, Ken, without giving away anything? Damn, dropped. Dead. Damn it. Lost him. Didn't make the list. Well, it's hard when something's been out yeah. for, you know, so sure. I know it wasn't a hit, uh, and I'm a big Brad Pitt fan. He's got a fuckboy haircut in it. That's Stop cool. it, uh -oh. dude. That's fucking really rude about World War II. That's the greatest generation. That's the greatest generation. They came up with the greatest haircut. <laughs> And you bastardized it by calling it the fuck boy. Uh, he just looks like a fuck boy. How do you spell boy? B O I. See, that's everything about that's wrong. <laughs> no one in the greatest generation would ever spell it B O I. I decided I don't even know after hearing that if I can go do the Creeps with Kids show. And, uh, no, don't at the let you have to. The Emerald Theater this Saturday, <laughs> uh, January 18th. Um, Doors are open for everybody in Michigan who would like to come and anybody who wants to draft from Ohio. Good. Yeah. Ohio. I think it'd be a nice thing. Yeah, that's a nice little jaunt. Yeah. yeah. Get away a little bit. Mm -hmm. Creepstore.com for tickets. What? Creepstore.com for tickets. <laughs> John in Kansas. Hey, guys. For me, it's uh, Saving Private Ryan. It's It's got two of the most epic battle scenes ever. It's beautifully shot. It's sad, and it's got the little funny parts, like when Tom Hanks goes, maybe you should shut up. It's, that yeah. one does it for me every time. Uh, where are you on this one, Chris? It's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of Saving Private Ryan. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would just say it's just okay, but it's just, I, I, again, it's, I base that trauma of watching the, the beginning of it? Yeah. yeah on that it's not an enjoyable experience for me because and it, it doesn't mean it's a bad movie it's very difficult for me to watch there's a movie that you should probably watch first mm -hmm. um to kind of relax you into it and it's called uh shaving ryan's privates <laughs> And okay. I think it kind of puts lays, you in the mood. Lays a base down. Mm -hmm. That I like better, Rob. For you. <laughs> Earl's the one who turned me on to that and demanded that I watch with him. <laughs> and then while I'm watching the film, I noticed that Earl had crawled on the floor and pulled my socks down. <laughs> it's very weird. This is a strange fetish. I stopped him before he started ink uh, licking my ankle bones. <laughs> While he was nibbling on my ankles, he was just going like this. Them bones. Free. <laughs> <Ankle Weird>. bones. <laughs> yeah. At first, I tried to act like, because I was raised Catholic, I tried to act like I wasn't noticing it. Okay. <laughs> Finally, I just started crying and ran out of there, pulling my socks up as I went. 
<laughs> but when I got home, I told no one. <laughs> hey, Bill in Charlotte, what's your uh, favorite war film? Uh, Siege at Firebase Gloria. I, I mean, it's got Lee Ermey in it. I mean, that his character alone is uh, worth it for a war movie. It's probably more of a cult, cult I, classic. I've never even heard of this film. When did no. it come out? Uh, I want to say mid to late 80s. Mid to late 80s. The Siege of Firebase Gloria. I know the song. G. <laughs> L O Now do you know this movie, Chris? I have I do not know this film. It's an Australian war film. No, I've never seen this or heard of it. It's about the Tet Offensive, which I've always heard to be very offensive. The main character is Lee Ermey, the the one that you see like in I think he's in one of the other big ones too, like Full Metal Jacket or something. That yeah, he's the that, yeah, he's the old guy. He just died yeah. not that long ago. Yep. Um, hmm. Just got an earache out of nowhere. Ouch. That, you rake my eye. Am I right, guys? <laughs> that did not make the list. Okay, did not make the list. Yeah, I think you have to be uh, heard of <laughs> to make the list. Grady in Wisconsin. Hey, how's it going today, guys? How's it going? Really good, Grady. Hey, uh, I changed my answer while I was waiting on hold, so I do apologize. But uh, I think I uh, here, with, here's uh, the deal that we have: original answer first. At least give us that first. All right, it's going to be stupid, but I said Top Gun, even though that was a conflict. I, I'm sorry, I feel ashamed right <laughs> now. No, don't feel ashamed because Top Gun Two is coming out. Yeah, right. oh, and. Top uh, of the all right, this is Danger Zone, yeah, Chris? Yeah, um, now, but That's all I got. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you, good. Did, you, you did great. Did, you did a really good job, right. Grady. Two different directions, but I love it. <laughs> Peace. Um, let's go over here to... Let's go to Lance. Lance. Lance, Lance Dallas. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? Good. How's it going? Good. Uh, I went with Longest Day. That's a very, I just think yeah. it's, you know, the cast alone. Now, what was that the battle of? The longest day is D-Day. Right. Mm-hmm. But what was I the mean, one that took place, like, in the, the age? That's what I was thinking of. Because I'm going to tell you something. One of uh, uh, Jack Vaughn, his dad's book, deals a lot of fighting in the South Pacific. And it was one of the most difficult things. Yeah. I've ever read in my wow. life about how long really that went and how many, how many, like you said before, kids mm-hmm. were lost. Uh, it's just crazy. Also, w- one of the most difficult things I've ever met, uh, read, I didn't meet it, I read it, <laughs> was John McCain's book about being in prison camp in Vietnam. And I remember uh, thinking to myself, if I'm having this much trouble making this through one chapter. You know what I mean? Yeah. What did he go through? You right. know what I mean? Like, I felt like I'm not even sure I'm man enough to you, finish this chapter. Do you think that that was insulting to him if someone was like, tough read for me? <laughs> Gotta tell you, <laughs> did not enjoy your book. <laughs> Just really, but you do, I mean, I, uh, men tend to feel like a pussy when they start to read about that kind of thing because there's something when you're a little boy you're like i'm ready to be te- tested you know what mm-hmm. i mean and that's why a lot of people go into the service some people go into the service because they just have heard so much about boot camp they want to give it a try you know what i mean right and other people and then they're in the service after that you know what i mean that's the problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but that's what happens when we're kids we think about it quite a bit and when my father went in in World War II, there was like so s- few supplies that, and they were up somewhere on like uh, Lake Erie. They were marching around with sticks and shit. You know what I mean? Oh, like shit. they didn't yeah. even have the equipment, the, the weapons. Now that you imagine would have. this is a yeah. gun, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is preparing me. You've got your gun backwards, son. <laughs> uh, let's go to Zach in Toronto. What's the best war movie? Yeah. Uh, best, best movie, I think, is uh, Enemy at the Gates. 
Uh, it's a sniper movie? Yeah, with Jude Law, Russian sniper versus uh, SS sniper. Yeah, supposedly this is based on a true story. And you yeah. just see uh, just the the burned outness of living in some of these cities. That that whole thing of is there food, is there drink? No, there's no there electricity. Isn't. <laughs> oh, God. It's always cold. It's just yeah. This is fucking this is nightmarish. Gonna be one of the reasons, like this kind of vibe, can't I, really handle these movies. I am now thinking to myself, we must have made more. War movies than any other kind of movie. And I remember being a kid. John Wayne, Cowboy, love those movies. John Wayne, War, never liked one of them. Really? Never liked one yeah, John one, Wayne, War stuff. movie. Loved them as a cowboy. I felt a lot more free. You know what I mean? We're out on the plains. <laughs> good open air, big yeah, sky country. It's a good open air thing. I think one of the most difficult World War movies I've ever seen, World War II movies, is Das Boot. And it fucking, oh, yeah. I saw it in the theater and I'm like, I don't even know if I can stay in here. I'm Claustroph so fucking yeah. Cla claustrophobic. Yeah, movies in a, where a tight space like that, no thanks. <sighs> no, fuck a submarine. Yeah. I wouldn't last I would day. be like this down there all the time. Do you hear a drip? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a submarine movie out of space, like a, like a space shuttle movie. Like Alien or something. It's one in the same. I can't breathe. I find a lot of difference for the space movie. The fucking, just the surrounded by water really just fucking freaks me I, out. Ryan Lynch writes to us, Well, you guys almost completely dismiss Save It Private. Ryan, Chris's whole persona is very hipster-like. Just hate <laughs> very well-liked popular things. It's not exactly true. I know a lot of people who aren't big fans of Saving Private Ryan because it's kind of smaltzy and it is. And after know. the f they, they blow their load at the fucking beginning of the movie. You yeah, can't they do. You can't fucking live up to what Spielberg did in the first fifteen minutes, wherever it is. I think it's even more than that. It Jesus. just goes on and on at the beach, and then the <laughs> next thing you know, you're just following these yeah. five ten dudes. guides around or whatever right. it is. There's the where I can't remember what actor is the one who gets killed off in this moment, but I always remember he gets shot, like gut shot, and you kind of see color just drain out of yeah. him, and it always really disturbed me. And that was like in the middle of the movie, but like that beginning is... What always uh, bothered me in the movie is that one guy just panicking and letting his friend get stabbed to I death. I hated that, that so much. It's fucking I had, so difficult to watch. It's fucking, I got so angry watching it's that. It's so <laughs> sickening. And he kind of like just backs out of the room, yeah. like just let me go. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. It's fucked up. It's so terrible. But yeah, that movie uh, didn't win awards or anything. I don't think it was seen as, you know, for what it was seen as. Right. So by the way, a lot of times people are like, there's no women directors, but they've been pricks to a lot of fucking directors over the years. Spielberg. Didn't get fucking nominated for a lot of fucking movies when there were 10 or 11 fucking people from his movie, like Color Purple or even Jaws. How do you not fucking put him up for Jaws? <laughs> there's a great thing of him having a TV crew there waiting for the Jaws phone call. Is there? Yeah, he's oh, only no. like 25 or something. Oh, no. And he's very, he's very nerdy. Like, you think he could have started Facebook. He's that fucking nerdy. <laughs> But yeah, you are very hipster, like where you. No, I agree with that. Uh, sure, I'm hip. Look yeah. at that mustache. Uh, Maddie Home Runs comes up when one that hipster Chris will like coming home in a body bag. <laughs> Love that you one. Know, when someone from that war <laughs> so, means everything to me. Body bags too. Yeah. Yeah, here's the daily from body bags too. Check them out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Jerry in Kansas. What's your favorite war movie, Jerry? It's a comedy, kind of, but MASH. My family in the 70s when that came out, we loved that movie. And we had it when they had the old uh, the disc before VHS. That uh -huh. was one of the first discs that they sold. And we watched that thing, me and my brothers and my family, hundreds of times. You Love watched it because you got to see First Bush. <laughs> That's true. Thank you. Yes. yes. That was yes. a big thing when I'll that live. movie came out. Is there was some shower scene? I think with who played Hot Lips? Uh, Sally Kellerman. Oh, so good. He is really good.
How do you remember all these things, Earl? You know what I'm going to call you, Earl? What? Radar. Because you're always there <laughs> for me with the answers. It's a very fast scene. Uh, all right, let's keep jumping into this. Uh, Charles and Boise. Uh, yeah, Red Dawn. Red Dawn is every kid's fantasy 100%. because uh, yeah. your neighborhood is invaded and you and your friends <laughs> form a platoon. That sounds pretty cool. And you fight back. And it's why kids like terror cells when they're young. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, we can do this together. We'll be heroes. And then we'll go on and we'll have 42 girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> and everything's going to be perfect forever. Everything's going to be perfect forever. We're just going to be fucking banging each other. <laughs> no one's going to fuck with us. Uh, Anyone who does is going to get gutted. That did not make the list since that was a fictional world war. Oh, well, you can't. Yeah, why can't you have a fake war? That's what the, the list is. As it's all actual wars based on real mm. wars. Yeah, but maybe the war is real, but these stories aren't most of the time. Exactly. I know, but they're They've saying that no. System, As you're saying, you know, like you're on our side. You're not, Chris. I am on your side. Them. Are you with uh, Bennington or with Vulture? I'm not with fucking Vulture of all publications. Did I do yes. Yes. <laughs> you are Vulture. The way you get down and you you pick at fucking dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you eat lunch. <laughs> hey, I, I just thought of this, like that thing where you lose your temper very quickly, like we were just pretending to. Uh huh. I'm down in the fucking village. Having a little smoke in front of the underground, right? So the guy walks by and, you know, there's this is a constant thing. Coke, weed, coke, weed. He just fucking says coke or weed. Got them both. I never answer this, guys. Plus, I'm of the thing that, how good is their coke going to be? It's going to be terrible. Know. So he's going past this kid and he's got five girls. And uh, he go coke, weed. And the kid goes, coke, weed? coke and weed i hear him he keep saying to these girls he's got coke and weed you know he's the buddy uh -huh. he's got coke and weed and he keeps bringing it up he's bringing it up fucking smoking i'm like this fucking kid's starting to annoy me bringing it fucking it's fucking coke and weed this guy's got a job to do their uber comes he's getting in the car right he stands outside of his car and he points at the guy he goes he has coke and weed that guy has coke and weed. I'm just smoking. What? I haven't said a fucking word to anybody. I go like this. Hey, motherfucker. We don't play that shit down here. Get in your fucking car. Get in your car. He's all fucking freaked <laughs> out. He gets in his car. I go, I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> I don't know why I'm acting like I'm fucking wingman. Yeah. You Take know, care like, of coke and like I'm, yeah. I'm one of 11, but I'm like, this guy. Let him run He has business. enough fucking problems. Yeah. There's fucking, there's fucking cops talking to somebody else. Yeah, be chill. I was so fucking pissed off. That's... And all he was doing was playing his little fucking bridge and tunnel games. Yeah. yeah. You never saw fucking anybody selling drugs before? What a fucking asshole. Yeah. That's and by weird. the way, I wish I made up that thing or made up the tone. <laughs> and then the funny thing was, I had to go in and do a set in front of the same people who were in that line. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> Who heard me do that? <laughs> and one of them was Hoagie Dom, and I didn't even know. It. But I don't know if he. I didn't doubt very much. I'm sure he would have brought it up. Brought up. <laughs> hey, are you fucking working his muscle for the coke and weed guy? No, I was curious. Did um, did he, did coke and weed guy hear you come to his defense? He, no, he just fucking stood next to me. I mean, I guess he thought it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he wasn't fucking caring as much as I did. Right. How good could his coke be? That's fucking be terrible selling coke. it on the fucking street. Yeah. If you're selling coke by word of mouth, <laughs> it's got to be by like whisper. that powder that we used to call redneck aspirin. Oh yeah, they used to fucking <clears throat> sell it at the AM stations. Yeah, it had it as a name, so it's like an N or something. Hey, oh, yeah. easy, dude. All right, I better <laughs> all know it because you worked in radio. Remember that? I don't know off the top of my head. Some kind of powder, and when I came in, it used to be. You could only own like an FM station and an AM station mm -hmm. in any town. And the AM station was very fucking hard. And they had to sell this dog shit. <laughs> I really thought Radar was going to know that one too. I, know. I mean, he knows Wait, everything. He does. He's certainly cutting Wait. his coke. Wait, Earl just told me there's choppers coming in. <laughs> <laughs>
But I wish I didn't have that fucking thing still like I was a kid. It fucking annoys me. Because <laughs> what am I going to do? Punch a fucking young kid? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Jeff. Hello. Hey, yeah. Jeff. What's your... Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm thinking about Glory because it's one of the few movies from Massachusetts that doesn't have Ben Affleck in it. Glory, I thought that would have been the one you would have picked. Yeah, it Earl. seems... It's high on my list of favorite war movies and has one of the most heartbreaking scenes ever in a war movie. Which one? When uh, Denzel gets beat. He gets that punched. That one's sad and also the night before when they know they're going to die. Oh, yeah, that's And really they're sad. fucking yeah. going, you know, I know, you know what I mean? This ain't happening, but we're here, you know, and they're fucking proud <laughs> that they're not slaves. I mean, it just kills me. Yeah, it was so heartbreaking. Yeah. And that's why I'm always surprised when, you know, we debate it and Chris picks up the Confederacy as his oh, why do his you? favorite side. Well, I mean, you know, they had they had a lot of uh, they had a lot of good points. I mean, they wanted to just be separate from the United States, separate but unequal. <laughs> <laughs> why couldn't the Southern states just do their own thing? Got a Southern accent. When you know I... what? It's funny. I think everything would have been somewhat the same. Just like Canada and break <laughs> off, and you know, no. everyone's like, we can't keep you anymore. Go, <laughs> do what you want to do. Uh, when I was a kid, my el- one of my elementary school teachers we were learning about the Civil War, and she kept saying "we" about the South, and all of us were like, "I wish she would stop doing." That. A lot of us came from up north. <laughs> <laughs> really, wish she would stop saying "we." This is not we. We did the best we could with it. <laughs> We're like, Fuck. But them blue bellies kept coming. There's nothing we could do. <laughs> really wish you would stop. Those bastards burnt our cities down to nothing. <laughs> and plenty of black people like being slaves. <laughs> they always used to say. Oh, they shit love like that. to say that. Some of them really enjoyed their time on the plantation. <laughs> and they were treated very well. Treated like family members or <laughs> beloved pets. <laughs> I had a blanket made of my favorite slave. <laughs> <laughs> I call this but I call this little um slave birdie. <laughs> I love the rubber uh, rubber back and belly. <laughs> Earl, what side were you on Civil War? Because I know you're from North Carolina, so you're leaning south. <laughs> I was on the side of the North. Hey, how come? Um, freedom. <laughs> they didn't want to be owned by someone. Well, tell that to the Irish, Earl. Tell that to the fucking Irish. You know who we never asked, and I hate to do this because there's so many people in them, but I'm going to get a dumb one. Um, oh, boy. I'm sorry, I had to, uh, one of our guests canceled. Oh, really? Yeah. Little intern Dana. Oh, Dana. Surprise, she, surprise. She had to go to urgent care. Probably an STD. Um... <laughs> Really fucked well, up. Chris, while you're laughing, yeah. it appears that she tried to take a shit and a big part of her asshole <laughs> spilled out. Even more embarrassing. You think? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this, because, uh, you know, her friend Janelle was, was coming in with her. I bet after today, we're only going to want Janelle back and never Dana. Because Dana doesn't get along with Chris. She doesn't. The two She's, of you guys are I bet that's why she had to dumb. go to urgent care. She had a panic attack. Well, you kind of bully her in a lot of ways. She can fucking ha- uh, fucking handle her own. She's no, fucking. She was your intern, right? Yeah, she's former intern Dana. And her uh, <laughs> problem was that she told us later that after the rest of us left, they used to grope her in the office. I never groped her. I never touched her. That she's... sounds terrible. I don't think you're supposed to do that with interns. Yeah, you're not. That's why I didn't do it. You yeah. know who you sound like right now, Who's Harvey that? Weinstein. I'm not. I you don't... had the same defense. You didn't do it. <laughs> no, I didn't do it. I have the same defense. You, you but climb I didn't... stairs like him. <laughs> Um, he needs a walker, but he needs, needs a walker for his snacks. <laughs> that would be fucking funny if he had a juice box on his walker and every once in a while. Now, did you see that the famous model is in the jury pool? And she said, it's Gigi oh, Hall- Hadid. Hadid. Hadid, yeah. Now, she said that uh, she told the judge that she could be very impartial. She would just go by the facts. And then... Weinstein was going like this. I think I got a great part for you. <laughs> I could do for you what I did for Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if I could stop this for a moment and give this jury a script. <laughs> oh, so Vito, I never got to ask you your favorite war movie. 
it's it's recent. It's I had just saw 1917 last week, and that's your favorite. I love. I don't. Oh, I love it. Such a I know, but why would you just say something you saw something a week ago is the greatest of all? Because I lo- I loved it, and I really the only other war movies I've seen is Jarhead, and that sucked. Oh, sucked. That's a fucking great war movie. I don't know Jarhead. I remember seeing it and being really disappointed. And what? The same way he was disappointed that war didn't turn out the way he wanted it to, where he couldn't become the hero sniper. That's a good point. You know, that's something you need to see. Not where they they turn 1917 and they still fall back into honor and all that kind of shit. That's some of the stuff that I read. And and that does turn me off, you know? Yeah. It's an honor to be here defending the South against this (laughs) northern aggression. 1917 didn't make the list. Nor nor did did Jarhead. Um, I gotta take this call, guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's take a break. All right. People, you know, not a lot of the people know this, but he's Canadian. Mm. Uh, but has always done the best he possibly could, <laughs> despite that happening to him at such a young age. It's the Bennington Show. So I had to take that call from the coast, mm. and by the coast, I mean the left coast, the mm. land of fruits and nuts, <laughs> La La Land. Seemed like a cool call. Yeah. Me and Chris are very much inside in here like, what do you think that call is? Yeah. Seems important. No. Business related. What's he talking about? I said, um, Chris, you're not normally cut out of his business dealings. What's going on? I well yeah, I did. Yeah, Chris is cut out of this, uh and I'm using Earl on this one because That's, Yeah. Earl is straight out of Compton. Mm-hmm. And he gives me the street cred that I need out there. Like one day I was going out all dressed in red and I was like, not in this neighborhood. Yeah. And I go, why? He goes, this is a blue neighborhood. I go, what are you, children? And he goes, no, just the opposite. You guys are kind of in your own gang and me and Chris are in our own Yang gang. Can I tell you something about Earl? And I love this. And Beast Mode would back me up on this. Earl looks out from a chicken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you gotta look so chicken. today, when it was coffee time, you got the chicken from Gail. Yeah, I gave my chicken. Yeah, Gail, you. Uh, I mean, Earl, you're familiar with this term, correct? I I was somewhat familiar with it. I thought it had other meanings, but yes. What did you think it meant? Uh, poultry. I thought it meant. If I, believe it or not, I thought it meant women, like your chick. Well, I uh, the way Beast Mode used it was money. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times in the slang world, uh, it can mean whatever you want. Like wrestlers always say gimmick. And gimmick could mean anything, including, including your pills, your t shirts, your yeah. gimmicks. After a while, we got to go, hey, come on, what are we talking about constantly with gimmicks? Right. It's just at this point, it's a noun. Now, I'd never call money chicken. You know what I would call it, right? What's that? Cabbage. You know what I mean? All right. Cool. Give me some cabbage. What do you call it, Chris? Doe. I call it doe. A deer. No, D-O-E? no, no. D-O-E? No, D-O-U-G-H, doe. I call it paper. Straight paper. Like, where my doe at? That's why I always called you paper boy. Because mm-hmm. you're taking care of your paper boy. Because I'm all about that paper boy. Any uh, new slang you guys know that maybe we could all start using now? Oh, God. I, I feel like I'm so bad with the new, like, uh, I'm kid great slang. With it. You know, like... Uh, by the way, I'm starting to call word derves mini meals, which is oh, really? fun. I heard someone use this slang term. Instead of 24-7, they're working 25-8. So they're working more than time. Eight days a week, going back to the Beatles class. Exactly. Yeah. I'm doing 25-8, motherfucker. <laughs> See, yeah, that's new slang, 25-8. Yeah. Earl, you using any new slang you, maybe we could all pick up on? Um, I'm not sure if it's new or not, but I always hear people like, we're going to go out and get lit. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Because my grandmother used to say you were all lit up. Oh, Liddy. Yeah. Liddy City. Yeah. We're uh, living in Liddy City. Look, Vito hangs around with a lot of street thugs, so he might know some of this. <laughs> all right, so the big one right now, and I heard some teenagers saying it the other day, is uh, capping means lying. So, like, you say no cap means no lie, and you'd be like, no, you're capping right now, and that means what? you're lying. I feel moment. like you're capping me by saying this, and I'm going to repeat it somewhere. Is no. this a cap? And Artie Fuqua is going to laugh me out of the underground. <laughs> no cap yeah. is a real term. <laughs> it can't be. I mean, there's, no. I, I was 
I heard two. I heard a teenager screaming out, "No cap, bro! I hooked up with her." <laughs> I'm out in the street. I'm out there, twenty five eight, and I haven't heard anyone say fucking. Cap By the way, I uh, if when I see people that I don't think are worthy of dating me, I call them scrubs. <laughs> I always tell them no scrubs. What do you think is like the last new slang that you were like, okay, now I've adopted it into my vernacular? I would probably say I better check it before I wreck it. <laughs> um, For me, it's the bomb.com. <laughs> you the bomb.com. I also say if I don't like something, it's no diggity. <laughs> I'll say something's baller if it's super rare. Like that's a baller ass car that you guy's do, there right there. You do well, say you, baller. You also still say that somebody did something like a boss. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like a boss. You know what? Here's one that I have heard the kids say, and like an old lady, I was like, I'm gonna start saying that. I love shook. What's this? Shook. Like scared. Like I am shook. Like that, instead of saying you're shocked by something. I'm shook. I'm shook. I mean, he told me that news. Yeah. Oh, and, and it's even evolved to shooketh. Shooketh. What? Yes. You ever tried mini meals for no, like appetizers? I no, I haven't tried that. Can one I get yet. some of the mini meals yep. over here? I got the check in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I adopted ghosted. That was a fucking thing that became like a real fucking term. That's yeah. A while ago though. That's yeah, it's like a ghost. decade and a half. <laughs> Jesus, is that long? Well, that's how long it's been since you've been to college, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Warren. Day one, we'll get rid of any school fucking debt yep. that you had. I'm a Warren bro then. Good. But what about the uh, those of us have went and paid off? Sad. Shouldn't we get some money back yeah. for our problems? Too bad. You should have went Take my route. Take it off by ticket of taxes. That's what I call taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no cap. I'm not paying that shit. <laughs> Sometime, uh, you know, I'll say it's Uncle Sugar's lunchtime meal. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go take care of Uncle Shug Shug. <laughs> oh, I also call the police Popo. Okay. Or Fivo. Or Po Nine. <laughs> Sometimes you can call them Po Nine. I never say that. <laughs> oh wait, I know what I know what a recent yeah. slang that I used. I'm like, I heard the kids use it a lot, and then you said you said something, and I responded to you in that, <laughs> and you're like, "What's that?" And I was like, "I'm gonna be honest. That's the first time I use that, and that's weird flex, but okay." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like um, something that uh, Vito should have been up on. Yeah, weird flex. Weird flex, but okay. Vito, no, no shit. Earl also said to me when he wanted me to shake his hand, he said, "Skin me, Daddy O," <laughs> wow. which I feel like isn't that. No, no, that's a throwback. Yeah, um, I, I'm kind of uh, upset that Zaddy didn't fucking uh, catch on. Really I wanted yeah. to. I wanted to start fucking now, saying Zaddy. Zaddy is a daddy who's a zoomer. I th I think so, or it's just like a boyfriend, maybe it's like just but, a daddy. Yeah, it's a it's a boyfriend. It's like a a hot dude that takes care of you. And sometimes you say Zam Zaddy, <laughs> Zam Zaddy. What's the thirsty <laughs> thing that I keep saying? Oh yeah. Thirsty's like you're desperate, like you're right. thirsty for that pussy. Oh, um, like Bobby, that was really. Bobby yeah. and Charlotte has a variation of this. No, hey, that's Bobby. a thirst trap. Like a you thirst set trap. up the. I never heard this Jason, one. Right. Jason Momoa was thirsting for some uh, Instagram pictures on uh, on the Golden Globes by showing off his guns. All right, so he was saying, oh, he was thirsty to get on Instagram, so the thirst trap was his. Guns, right? That's yeah. the trap, yeah. right? There. And guns are arm muscles. <laughs> yeah, guns are okay. arm muscles. Thirst trap can is a it's a big term for Instagram models that they'll be called thirst traps because they just put up pictures in like bikinis and shit. So that's uh, what fault. they used to say, attention whore. Yes, is right. that a thirst trap? It's, is it used as an insult? Yeah, like can you just be like. You're such a thirst trap. You can own it. Like, okay. I think I think um, Karen Fian has openly said she posts thirst trap photos. Okay. Yeah, she does. There's no <laughs> she doubt does. about it. I think she keeps losing boyfriends over it though. I've I've seen so much of her. <laughs> I've seen yes. so much of I'm, the lovely Karen Fian. Yeah. I feel like I should send her some nudes just so we're equal. I'm gonna send her some Chris nudes. <laughs> now the thing is, she will put a butt picture every time she goes to the gym too. Yeah. Which. You know, it's a locker room shot. It's the, somebody... weird, the weird thing is, I feel like I know her gym locker room so well. Like, there's a couple different mirrors <laughs> that I'm, I'm very aware of. And I'm like, oh, back to that gym, huh? <laughs> hey, Matt in Denver. 
Like, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Hey. So I had a, a little endeavor where I was doing what Ron was predicting before in Denver for a while. So I was around a bunch of little hooligans for a long time. So I got to get the skinny on a lot of the Good. new kids slang. Yeah. Um, one of it is, so if a girl likes you, she's throwing it at you. Like, oh, she's throwing girl, it at me. Real, okay. Have you heard that, Vito? I'm going to catch that. I've heard like she can catch it. She can catch yep, it. I like said. catch your dick? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> After you sever it and throw it at her? <laughs> no, Chris. Oh. Matt. Is tell me everything that's going down in Dogville. Yep. <laughs> oh, you guys don't call Denver Dogville? No, no I didn't, I didn't know. know. That's what I do. I'm going to start calling Dogville yeah. then. What do you call Chicago? Chicago. I call it Cheese City. Cheese City? Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm learning a lot. I didn't even think that was one of its nicknames. Uh, what do you call Pittsburgh? Uh, I just call it Pittsburgh. I call it the armpit. The armpit? <laughs> the armpit? Yeah. Okay. What do you call Philadelphia? It's Philly? I'm going back to cr- che- uh, cream cheese is what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> Hey, Lou and PA. Hey, guys. What's up, Lou? I'm let you know, this show is on fleek. It is so, uh, on, fleek. on fleek. Is that a good it thing or a bad fleek. thing? <laughs> yeah. My eyebrows are on fleek. Yeah. The fuck? <laughs> Earl, <laughs> eyebrows on fleek, the fuck? Earl wrote tweak, though, <laughs> instead of on fleek. Oh, oh Earl. my God, Earl, you're not on saying. fleek at all. We're not a tweaker. A tweak no in my idea. nipples. Yeah. <laughs> I told him you guys would know what it meant. He had no idea. Oh, Earl, God. what the fuck is wrong from you? Oh, my God. He's not on fleek at all. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Earl, what do you call Miami? <laughs> I always call it Miami. I call it Dolphin Town. <laughs> I like that. Hey, Sailor in D.C. Hey, Bennington. So I guess we're running out of slang because my kids are using slang that my grandparents would have used. So that the happens. latest one is shenanigans. I say shenanigans a lot. I didn't know it was making a comeback. Sailor, I'm afraid that your kid, like me, your kid's a nerd. (laughs) I'm going to do the same thing as you. (laughs) Man, that's really embarrassing that Earl didn't know on fleek. Yeah, I know. No, he's no shit. Uh, What do you call uh, Boston? Bean Town sometimes. I call it Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr, right? Bobby Orr. (laughs) Sometimes I call it Jay Giles. (laughs) Oh, that's cool. Mm. I go, I'm going up to Jay Giles. I hope it's not, you know, I'll go like this. I hope, I hope it ain't going to be flaking this weekend. Flaking? What's yeah, that's what mean? we call flaking? snow. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Flakes, I yeah. get it. Snowflakes. Yeah. That's cool. Um, what do you call railroad tracks? Uh, just tracks. I call them train zippers. <laughs> <laughs> You don't you don't say don't cross the train zippers? No, I just no. say don't cross the tracks. It's yeah. actually quite poetic. Yeah. You know? That's weird. Yeah. What do you call clouds? Just clouds. That's all I call them. Simply clouds. I always say sky fog. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say that? No, it makes a lot more sense, though. That's good yeah. slang. Uh, Matt in Nova Scotia. Hey, what's going on, Bennington? Hey. My uh, seven-year-old daughter was telling me about the, playing this game, and she was really upset. And uh, she was saying uh, they were puppy guarding. And I was like, what the fuck's puppy guarding? And uh, it, it basically is like cherry picking when someone's like guarding you really close so that you can't get a point. See, we always said that cherry picking was somebody hanging around the net, not yeah. coming down the rest of the fucking uh, court. You know what I mean? Yeah. Puppy guarding. Puppy guarding would be, uh, remember when we used to release the hounds on yes. my basketball team? Yes. Suddenly, I would yell, release the hounds. We'd double team immediately. <laughs> and kids that age, it was 10-year-old ball. They would panic all the time. <laughs> and then i go like this. And if you get the ball, straight to Bobby. Straight to fucking Bobby. Oh, my God, Bobby. Do you know that he's playing in the NBA now? I did not know. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he was great as a kid. And... They call him Greek Freak. <laughs> I think he's playing up uh, Milwaukee, which wow. I ended up calling Beerville. <laughs> Love that name. There is a weird name from Milwaukee that has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with beer or cheese or anything. Uh, I heard it come up the other day. Really felt like they fucking dropped the ball in it. Cream City? That's exactly right. Why do they call it Cream City? Because uh, of the creamy yellow bricks made in the 1800s from clay. That's stupid, creamy right? Yellow. Cream City blows. <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? The name. About? I've never been to Milwaukee. <laughs> you know what I call Wisconsin? What's that? Whiskey. <laughs> Going up to whiskey. Better. Uh, Sean in Boston. Hi. Uh, yeah. So I was uh, hanging out with this 
younger girl, like 20, and uh, I said I liked her curves, and she said she asked if I, she was dummy thick. And I don't. It was just the weirdest. Thing. Ever hear a dummy thick? Dummy thick. I've never heard of dummy sick. Thick. thick. Dummy th- oh, Bro. sorry. I was reading. <laughs> it's Earl wrote dummy oh, no, sick. No, you but... did that just to point out that Earl's stupid. You heard him. You got fucking headphones on. You, <laughs> you wanted us to fucking hate Earl. You are such a jerk. I get Earl. it. Oh, my God. Everything is anti-Earl with Look, him. Look, let me tell you guys something. Earl's the best. Chris is the worst. We established <laughs> that yesterday. Fuck. What? My buddy and Yang gang? <laughs> <laughs> Back on the Yang gang. I'm down with Earl right now. I uh, I saw this being used online, that lines of cocaine are called nose beers. So instead of doing a line of coke, you're a rail, you're doing a nose beer. We used to just say coffee. <laughs> Make sure you bring that coffee. <laughs> have, I, have I told you guys about shoot that club up? That's, no, is that a, like school shooter? That cum? <laughs> it's when you come inside of a girl without a condom. Because you're sh- shooting the cum up. Yeah, because okay. you're shooting the club up. So what happened yeah. to cream pie? Is that fucking totally gone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like it because of the Pulse nightclub shooting. That's not funny to me. I know, Matt I hate and, it. Matt in Canada. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Uh, slang for beer, specifically in a can, uh, frost wagons. Frost, frost wagon. So, but I don't think it should be longer than. Yeah, it's very, it's very no, much it's stupid. It could be the same length. Like you could say brew. Bleh. <laughs> what about brewski? Ooh. Okay, now that's longer, but yet I'm willing to say it. It's fun. Brewski. It's more fun than frost wagon. <laughs> Got any frost wagons frost back? Frost wagon <laughs> beer and it's come a running. <laughs> Season like spelled S Z N is a big thing right now. Oh, yeah. So just you just say things are different seasons, but spell it that way. So in the summer you would say sundress season S Z N. I'm not How's that, that a slang? <laughs> I mean, that's just lazy. That's illiteracy. <laughs> I don't think you understand me. what slang is. Well, yeah. it's it's become a thing that everything is a season, but specifically you throw in S Z N. That's weird. Yeah. That's bullshit. You got Finstagrams. That's when you uh, have a fake Instagram to throw people off. Like a Why burner? would you have a fake Instagram? What so are you, you doing? Get them. Look at pictures that aren't you. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually to hide from your significant other or oh. friends. But what are you putting on there? Pictures of yourself? It's, it's pictures, pictures it's, that are the danger. It's pictures of yourself, but it's like you. You only let certain people in. You only let certain Instagram. people in, and like this way, your if your girlfriend goes on your Instagram, the DMs won't be too suspicious. Interesting. That's what you're doing with your girlfriend. No, I think because the way you said that, it sounds like you want to get one and cheat yeah. on your girlfriend. I don't have any burner accounts, you fuck. Why are you mad at him? <laughs> He's accusing me of terrible because things. Because I brought up him. a Finstagram and he obviously has one and he's self-conscious about obviously it. Obviously not. <laughs> I think it's sad that you both cheat on your girlfriends. They both seem really nice. <laughs> with each other, though. It's just That's be, fucking be, so hot, you know, fucking each other. You fu- oh, I thought that you were dating each other's girlfriends. <laughs> Oh no! How much Wife you do swap. that? Wife swap, one no, night only. No fucking amount of money. Why? Fifteen million dollars. Looks like that's, somebody's a square. Yeah, that's really nerdy. It's just million. a two-person key party. <laughs> <laughs> you still have to swap keys. How much w- would you swap? Wife swap with Chris. I would. I would swap anything with Chris. I love Chris. <laughs> and I fucking See, fun, he's right? Cool. Yeah. He's way fucking cool. I don't know. I feel like you're more gang gang material. <laughs> yeah, he is. Than Chris is. Uh, some of the people wrote in, Claptrap, we work in a claptrap. Medieval sla- slang for bullshit. The queen says, I'm not happy to you when he's mad at someone. <laughs> I'm not happy to you. He sounds like he's three of them. It's adorable. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Tushed said, Ron is thinking of Goody's headache powder when he is referring to redneck aspirin. You're exactly right. Goody's headache powder. Uh, six is I call my money ducats. That's cool. I guess. I guess someone said that. I I think they're pretty cool. Captain D said uh, that has to be a new fat joke. You're so fat, you need a walker for your snacks. <laughs> I think it would be fun to have snacks up there. If I was using a walker, yeah, I would appreciate that. A little basket. In a few months, we'll be glad to do that for you. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Chris stole a slang term from me recently. Oh, he, heard me, he heard me saying sunnies all the time, and then I just all of a sudden heard him talking to people about his sunnies. I do like the I do, I do like calling sunglasses sunnies. Yeah, oh. but didn't you 
you guys I did just... steal that from you, and I'm happy about it. And, but it, didn't you guys steal that from the Brits? I feel like the Brits. Aust- yeah, the Brits Sunday. and Australians yeah. are home Sunday. He also stole push notes from me. <laughs> What's that? Come on. Push notifications, like you... when, like when you on your phone, if you get like a, a yeah. news thing, it's called a push notey, and I made that up. <laughs> no, I know that you did it. <laughs> I because definitely did. The but... first time I heard him say that, I was like, "That's the silliest thing I've ever heard, and it'll never catch on." Why didn't you guys ever jump on my thing for sunglasses? What's my, that? My heat shield. <laughs> I'm gonna get my heat shields up. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. Hey, Fuck J- writes to us and says, forget Dana. How's Molly doing? I forgot. <laughs> Fuck used to have a big crush on Molly, and Molly was having none of it. Oh my God. She was a little nervous about Interesting. it. Interesting. Joel in Canada. Yeah, uh, hack a dart. Instead of go for a smoke, it's let's go hack a dart, eh? Hack a dart, eh? Let me in on this. I'm going to go hack a dart with you. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we got to go hack a dart, man. Yeah. I'm going to start back up on darts just to be part of it. Yeah, I got to start. Yeah, I can't quit darts. Um, I was like grits. Yeah. By the way, I I heard about a comedian who has a stalker that a lot of other people are nervous about. Really? Really? I don't want to show it to Chris because he never shuts his fuck hole. My okay. fuck hole is closed at all times. <laughs> really? I know that because you won't fucking have a wife swap with Vito. Because you're a fucking square, dude. It's so uncool. Swap with me, man. I'm not swapping with you. Have you can you watch. Have you seen his beautiful girlfriend? Yes. She's beautiful. Yeah. Just swap. It's She's a deal. smoke show. Well, all stars now. now. In the smoke show. Mark in Oregon. Hey, how we doing? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. As a kid, now, this is back in high school when, when I'm sure everybody drank. Back when uh, Schlitz malt liquor was really popular, back sure. in the late 70s, early 80s. We used to call the Foster's cans, we used to call them oil cans. Let's go get a couple oil cans, because that's ever, what oil, oil cans looked like then. Did you, you ever know? say it like this? Oil can, oil what can. Did say? Like the Tin Man. <laughs> you know, wouldn't be, that'd be fucking cool. Why don't we say, let's go get a couple Tin Man? <laughs> <laughs> They'll get it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's a thinker. And then when I won't won't get a beer for you, I'll go, yeah. I was never did give nothing to the tin man <laughs> that he didn't didn't already have. Jason in Minnesota. Hey guys. So we just started getting beer on Sundays in Minnesota, but before that we'd say we'd go on a Wisco run over to Wisconsin to get beer That's and fireworks. Cool. I they got like that. Fireworks Anytime you get beer and fireworks, you know it's going to be a great fucking party. <laughs> Wisco. Wisco. Fucking right. Yeah, peace. <laughs> oh, Jason. Yeah. Oh, Jason. Um, yeah, I think it, I think that kind of works, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. Uh, a lot of times I'll just say, if people are going to, if I'm going to Wisconsin, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ring uh, Aaron um, Rogers' doorbell. <laughs> You know, and then I got into just going at Aaron Berg's, and then I called it Iceberg, and then finally Titanic. I go, I'm going to Titanic this weekend, and made people try to think all the way through. Did anyone get it? No one. Oddly, the person that was most confused was Aaron Berg. He kept thinking it was about him. JT in Georgia. This is how we do it. That's a new slang term. I like it a lot. Yeah, how we do it. We do it yeah. like we do it. Yeah. I don't like that AF has become a slang thing. Where it's like Why not? I like to. I want to read as fuck. I don't yeah. want. I think it's fucking. AF has got it all. I love AF. Mm, no, too, yeah. too, it's too concise. By the way, the other day I said, "How's things going with your girlfriend?" To Chris, he goes, "Well, pretty good. We've been sucking face." And I go, "What does that mean?" And he said, "Kissing." <laughs> That's my slang term, yeah. yeah. It's weird that you would bring that up specifically, though. <laughs> well, hey, I, I want Ron to know. <laughs> uh, did you hear what I, I call Jewish people? Now, Seinfeld's. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a compliment. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Why did Stinks on Ice, like, get so big? Because that's, uh, it used to be even fish would stink on ice. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where that came from. Okay, I had no idea. I said it my whole childhood and had no idea they why. They would put fish on ice, like when you're in the supermarket, to keep the stink down. Yeah. Just the same way that they'll put ice in the urinal. Keep that hot piss smell. Yeah. A lot of times when I'm <laughs> in a bar and I got to take a piss, I go, I'm going to go melt some ice. <laughs> <laughs> or 
<laughs> I'll just go. Looks like it's time for the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Titanic. Like, yeah. Does that have to do with Wisconsin? <laughs> All right, sick with it. It's got the best. He says, I call my opioids naptizers. <laughs> naptizers. <laughs> That's cute, you know? I call them dead pills. Because <laughs> all the people who died. Oh, Hickman Bell did it first. See, I hate this new fucking gimmick of, like, if somebody else retweets. Oh, yeah. It looks and that's like why, it's theirs. Yeah. I'll in never the, fucking uh, work it out. In the notifications. You're right. It's confusing. Mr. Chris Steele says this. I heard my nephew say it was Buddy's party. Instead of yes, we're all down with that. Oh. It's like when we yeah. used to say disco. 100%. I like that. Yeah. Party. Yeah. Party. Why don't we say potty instead? Potty. Or, potty. Yeah. And the yad, not too yeah. far from the cat. God, I love Boston so much. <laughs> yeah. or, as I call it, Jay Giles. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was in college, I was wondering, what is the age that you can stop saying party? Like, I want to party. <laughs> I don't know if you ever, you know, stop. Because I still have friends who say they want to party like a rock star. And I go, what rock star? They're all dead. <laughs> no one ever says I want to party like a pop star. No. no. That sounds too conservative. Boring. Yeah. Because that sounds like somebody's like, you need to be up early tomorrow. Get to the gym. Look <laughs> hot for all these people. That's how we all make right. money. You as, need to work on your choreography. As wants to know what John means that all the Philly kids use. So John, I guess, is used as pretty much any noun, but it's really supposed to mean joint, uh -huh. but with the accent, with a very urban accent. That's a John, this is a John, that's a John, everything's a John. I never heard that before, Creed. No, I haven't either. And yet, for some reason, it pops up a lot now where you're like, oh, Philly, yeah. it's a John thing. And I'm like, I really hadn't heard of it until Re then. Remember, I told you the way the wrestlers would use gimmicks. Same right, way. Right, Everything exactly. becomes a gimmick. So somebody said, go pick up my Johns. Yeah. My Johns are late from school. Yeah. You know, they were like, what is everything a John about? <laughs> and fucking Creed stinks. <laughs> Not good. Him and his father like first both fucking stink, <laughs> stink on ice. Um, Melts of ice. Now, Chris told us uh, a couple days ago uh, that he eats cheese puffs in an odd way. I forget what we were talking about, things that we eat in odd ways. Yes, we were, just general and, foods that you eat strangely. Now, Chris, you got some... Cheetos puffs, not yeah. even the basic cheese puffs. I'm, yeah. I'm going is, your direction. This is a basic cheese puff. Mm. Says Cheetos puff. Now, you say you eat it how? I take the cheese puff and then I nibble all of the cheese off of the actual puff until yeah. it's just the puff is left and there's no more cheese. By I the, strip it of the cheese. By the way, we never used to say cheese puff in my neighborhood. What would you call it? Uh, tasty pillows. It's <laughs> a better name. All right, so let's see you eat your first puff. Right. Now, Earl's going to take a video of this mm -hmm. to put up. Now, I want to ask you again. You swear to God, this is the way you've always I eaten cheese. I, since a little kid, it weirded out my parents. This swear is, on your girlfriend's life. On my girlfriend's life, this is how I eat cheese puffs. Now this I is the proper way to eat a cheese puff. <laughs> the speed. The speed. The speed. <laughs> Mm. You get all the cheese off. I, I honestly thought this was not true, but look at the skill on which he did it. Now you could have eased. Now what is your problem with the puff? <laughs> I just want the cheese. It's since a child. It's I like I would sometimes would try to um, suck the cheese off. So then, but then it just got. When I told that to someone, they go, why doesn't he just suck the cheese off? But I would bet the puff implodes. Am I correct? It turns into like a weird slug. It's disgusting. Yeah. And then you swallow it quickly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. But this is this is the proper way to eat I, a cheese I'm puff. shocked to say this, but it was very efficient. I really didn't think his strategy well, was going to work. But you say efficient. He could be eating five fucking puffs in this time. I mean, for what he wants. For yeah. whatever reason, he wants to do this. Mm. But it's about... What he doesn't want in this case. <laughs> that's why his he puff. Why want don't the... you want the puff, though? Is I it... mean, it's unoffensive. And see, now, 
This puff was too, it was curled too much, so yeah. now it broke, and this makes me very upset. <laughs> now, <laughs> now what did Chris your mother angry. say when you were doing this? It was like, Christopher, why are you eating? Just eat the cheese puff. I was like, no, I just want the cheese muff. You eat it like Tom Hanks in Big. Yeah, with the little corns. Mm, he would love to eat Tom Hanks in Big. <laughs> Give it to me, Tom. Uh, hey, Mark in Arizona. Yeah, hi. Um, I wanted to say my dad has an odd way of eating uh, Cheetos and cheese snacks like that. Doesn't want to get messy at all, so he has a specific set of chopsticks that he uses. So he'll fill up a bowl mm -hmm. and sit on the couch and sit there and eat his cheese puffs. Chocolate. Here's what the problem is. He doesn't want any cheese on his little fucking yeah. dainty fingers. That's fine. Yeah. So he's... <laughs> There are people sure. that can't stand anything like that. I would judge Mark's dad, except for I just recently admitted that I use a chopstick to skewer a grape and then dip it into peanut butter. Right. Here's the disgusting so I'm not going to put part. my fingers in the jar of peanut butter. And we're going to need like a paper plate for this or something. But his discarded puffs are so fucking gross. Oh, <laughs> look at them there. So you're going to keep eating that till the end of the show. Yes, I'm going to have a... <laughs> Okay, an just, elephant graveyard of fucking cheese This is cheese kind puffs. of just like cheese puff right. bones to you. First, get a picture out there before the video. Ugh. Here, I'll get a fresh puff. My fingers are quite covered. Oh, I can hear the just salty cheese in your throat already. Ugh. Get a picture of me in action, an action shot. With his stomach, it's going to be a rough night in the office <laughs> after the show. Every night is. Yeah. <laughs> Gabriel? Rob in Rochester. Hey, Gail. Hey, Rob. I grew up at I grew up in Upper Manhattan. When I was a kid, we used to call cheese doodles clown shit. I wonder if Stanley likes that name. That's fucking yeah, hilarious. Clown shit. Let's pick up some clown shit. <laughs> Got some clown shits over here, Ron. <laughs> I would also call cheese puffs East Side Dave's. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna call shenanigans on the look. I just said shenanigans. Yeah. I was I was gonna call shenanigans on the fact that he did this at all. I didn't really buy it. You do now. Now I believe that this weirdo eats cheese puffs like this. Let when me he tell said you it, something. I was like, I bet he doesn't do that. I've known Chris Stanley for over six months. What? Much and longer than that. The truth he is, said much longer. He doesn't lie. He steals. Mm -hmm. Yes. He rapes. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. He's a fire starter, <laughs> but he never lies. Mm -mm. No, he's not a liar. Um, this was sent to us. My friend Greg used to call beers road sodas <laughs> when we'd go drinking and driving. <laughs> um, and then this. All right, there's some people kind of grossed out by the noises. <laughs> this is, yeah, we all are. <laughs> Um, noises? I mean, think about me. I got the noise and the visual. Lucky. <laughs> Would you please send them, Earl, rather than fucking taking this thing? People it's would like love to see it. like a fucking documentary crew in here. <laughs> I know. How much you want to do? You don't want Where are you going one. in the other room to do it? You could be sending from here, ready for the next shot. Vito, what kind of fucking show do you run over there? All right, this says, nom, 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 Stanley, <laughs> Stanley demonstrating the technique that set that poor little Puerto Rican girl to far rock away on an innocent cheese puff. I don't even know what any of that means. I don't know. Sounds dark, Ron. <laughs> what does that mean? All right, here's what I, I found out happened with little uh, Dana. But, Too um, much gonorrhea? All right, by the way, Justin Stengel wrote, it shouldn't be good radio, but listening to Chris eat cheese puffs is endlessly entertaining. Look, when you get to see... Oh, it's, the skeleton, the cheese skeleton puffs. I hate those bones. It's really disgusting. And yet I can't stop looking, and I'm I know. I'm becoming more excited as the little <laughs> yeah they hill stack is up turning into the speed. Were you expecting this kind of speed? I wasn't. Well, he's a rat. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's <laughs> literally a rat. A very rat like. All right, I got to give you an update on Dana. Yes. Um, Dana went to urgent care. And then the cardiologist. Oh, God. And then? Well, here's what I assume when someone does that. Panic attack. You think so? Maybe she's at the age for it. Yeah. You know? Probably the idea coming in here with a couple of big radio stars. Sure. You know what I mean? She probably blew us off the day drink as usual. 
That's good, Chris. Mm -hmm. But if she dies in the cardiologist, really you're going to feel like the cheese puff loser. <laughs> fucking... Your teeth are starting to get a bit of an orange hue to them. That's cool. It's a lot of cheese, girl. Because the, the cheese is going directly to the teeth. You know, yeah. normally that puff you try to go, bypass. Yeah, bypass the teeth. But it's right there at the front, right at your little uh, beaver chomps there. Hey, did you get to see Antonio Brown... Uh, Taking on the police when they came to his house. This I is, didn't. Uh, this is very exciting stuff. Chris, I hate I die. Uh, oh, the fingers. I really wish you weren't. Maybe Earl can touch what. Oh, you can type over there. Bring it up. Look, the guy from America looks like you. Mm -hmm. can see that. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's dead, though. That makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Earl? TMZ, Antonio Brown. Watch how long oh, it takes, Chris. This, this happens every time that you take one of your fucking day drinks. <laughs> Ron, I haven't had a, a puff sesh like this in a long time. <laughs> puff, puff, give, dude. <laughs> hey, Al. Al in New York. Hey, Bennington. Yeah. I just wanted to say that Chris sounds like a cheese beaver ready to build a puff dam out of those things. You are kind of a cheese beaver, dude. <laughs> That's what we call people who eat cheese puffs. <laughs> cheese beavers. I thought that he was saying that's why... Um, Dana had to go to urgent care. <laughs> Cheese beaver. <laughs> oh, that would be so sad. It's a mess down there for her. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we already I did it. I went too far, and you don't go farther, okay, Chris? I feel terrible. Ryan in Atlanta. Hey, so there's a term that uh, Cheetos coined for the cheese on your finger. It's called che Cheetle. Like Don Cheetle. Don Cheetle. Nice. It's, that's the cheese residue on your fingers. I'm covered in Cheetle right now. I'm sucking it off. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, hey, Chuck. What's up, Chuck? Hey. Yeah, that was much. Uh, Chris sounds like when he's eating them cheese balls. He sounds like he's nibbling on somebody's ball. Mm. Uh, That's where he learned it. It's true. It, it does, does kind of like sound that. like that. I assure you this is a cheese puff and not testicles. That's yeah. what they all say, Chris. Yeah. I, I doubt they all say cheese puff. They all say that. Uh, did you hear about the did you hear about the guy that went to the doctor and he complained about his penis? No. <laughs> he said my penis is turning orange. He said, Your penis is turning orange? Let's look at it. So he pulled it out and he was orange as hell. He said, I've never seen that before. He said, What do you do? He said, Well, I don't work. He said, What do you do all day? He said, I just sit at home and eat Cheetos and watch porn. <laughs> see? I'll see y'all. Y'all have a good day. Same. Same. <laughs> um, I heard a street joke on Shrill because I watched season two. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to you guys. Do you want to hear the street joke, or else it might ruin it for you? Street joke. Street wow. joke. Yeah, I want. Street I want to hear it. All right, I'm gonna just say to the listening audience who are big Shrill fans, you might want to turn off for the next 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the worst thing that you could hear after? Blowing Willie Nelson. What's the worst thing that you could hear after blowing Willie Nelson? What's that? I'm not Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that fucking joke, and I've been delighted for two days. <laughs> we ought to go back and do street jokes again. I know. It's so fun. Street jokes. Plus, you learn so many jokes that you jokes. can take to the street yourself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was hit in the streets with all these new jokes. When I'm out on the streets, oh, 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 I tell jokes to strangers. Chris still going around puff doodling. <laughs> I'm puffing, Ron. Um, I got quite so the pile here. You're going to keep going as long as you can. Yeah. Uh, Earl, I don't know why I have to not get a thing from you. Um, all right. The vid and pictures are going up. Let's keep them on stories for right now. But, or should we put them on the front page? Now let's wait until we get. Let's get a bunch of stuff. Maybe put something together of all the yeah. cheese puffing. Hmm. You're really proud of this, huh? I mean, it's a thing. <laughs> now, have you ever heard of another human being who does this the way you do? No, not at all. I'm going to ask you to please uh, stop knocking the dust off yourself. I think covering up with dust would really help. <laughs> yeah. All right, Plus, so, I don't want to see you sucking off your fingers anymore. All right, Antonio Brown, uh, and you know what a fucking nightmare he is to the NFL. So he and his wife, his, I guess, ex-wife or separated wife, were fighting something with the children. And the, the wife had to call the police 
to stop Antonio Brown and be able to take them away from Antonio Brown's mm-hmm. house. So hit play, uh, Earl. It's an ad playing. Mm. Let us know when the ad's over, Earl. Yeah. I'm going to go check to see if uh, the Chris thing is up yet. Hopefully it is. All right, Earl, Uh, pause it. Please. Look at this. Did you see the great picture of the... Oh, I love that picture so much. So cute. By the way, that song was my idea to add that. I think it really, really makes it it pop. He looks good, though, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, he, he looks fantastic. All right, play it up, Earl. Rewind it, Earl. You're 20 seconds in. It's okay. okay. It's fine. All right, so get the keys. Well, so I'm asking you, do you got the keys? What could you do? I did not say that. I'm trying to... This is him talking with the police. This vehicle was given to her as a gift Bro, this wasn't even about the vehicle. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. I'm going to listen to you. If she has any sort of proof that... Bro, she ain't got no vehicle. This is my fucking vehicle. I'm not listening when you say, no, you ain't telling me the right thing. You ain't telling me the right thing. I'm not telling you what you want to hear. No, you don't matter what I want to hear. This is my fucking vehicle. It's here. That's what I'm trying to And this bitch here, fuck, fucking here from the hotel. She don't have none. She came in to take the kids to school. The kids not getting to school. Okay. She don't have no car. This bitch is a baser. She have two other kids. She stay at a hotel. Look at her. She's a fucking lost cause. Look at her. Look at her. Well, I'm nobody to judge, sir. Yeah, but sir, she's here taking my car. She came for the kids. This is not her vehicle. I got it. The, all right, this vehicle it. was here. And so I'm she's trying to sell business. you on some bullshit. I'm telling you it's not. That's why I came here to talk to you, yeah. but you're screaming at me. Because you ain't helping me out. It's been 40 minutes, no justice. Well, 40 minutes, no here. justice. Don't About matter. Three minutes ago. Don't matter, bro. Ask these guys. These guys was here. They could tell you. Okay. She's here supposed to take the kids to school. She's trying to steal the vehicle. She shouldn't even be here. I let her in on the script of the kids. You want to see the messages? The kid's not going to school. She's here trying to steal in the car. Okay. This bitch is a baser, bro. She can't take no car from me. Okay. She's she evicted. She shouldn't be here. Right. You guys you should know that. Favor? Yes. Do me a favor, yes. These niggas got to make calls for niggas to get justice. The police can't even know what to do. They got to call. They feel me? Call other niggas. I don't know if that's true. This is what we got to do. <laughs> this is white versus black right here in your fucking face right here. Fuck the Hispanic. NFL. This is real life. White people trying to get over. Basers and the police not helping. Trying to finesse a Bentley. Bitch, you don't drive Bentleys. This is not your life. It's the bag of dicks. What? He's got some dick gummy bears. Okay. That... Why? Bag of dicks for the dicks. <laughs> He's throwing those over at the police. Oh, cool. Hey, Charles, here got the bag of dicks. Fish head. Fish head. Fish. Fish, here got the bag of dicks, fish. Charles, here got the bag of dicks. Fucking baser. Now, by the way, that's just the shortest version. This goes on for a while. Oh, my God. And, and he puts hey, nigga, this out. Yeah. Now, yeah. this was actually, what are you, like, uh... Live? Yeah, it was like a live. Wow. <laughs> He's been chopping. I didn't realize. He's, He's not been even paying attention. <laughs> Yo, man, you baser. You're a baser. Look, let me just make an announcement now. Antonio Brown mm-hmm. will never make another dollar playing in the NFL. <laughs> no one can fucking take this. No, this is too annoying. Now, this is what kills you. The guy's great. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's fast. In the middle of all this craziness, he can still play the game. He's costing himself ten, twelve million dollars a year because lo- of his mental illness. He lost a twenty million dollar contract. I think that's a contract that, that got transferred over from the Raiders to the Patriots before. Well, you know how he can make that up, Chris? How's that? He can't. <laughs> There's still, no other jobs like that. He still got a bag of dicks, though. <laughs> hey, Smash Bradley said this. This is perfect. Chris looks like Tom Hanks and Big when he's eating the tiny corn. Uh-huh. Killed it, Smash Bradley. Yeah, what? One. Finally, somebody brings up something yeah. that's fucking cool. Finally, I that an up. accurate fucking description. <laughs> Jesus. What did you say, Jesus? Vito? I brought that up a while ago. Bullshit. He bring up shit. Yeah. He's full of garbage. Don't fucking steal from fucking listeners. He's full of pasta and garbage. You fucking fish head. <laughs> you need a bag of tiny dicks. <laughs> mm. just just, wa- is that a little mouse fucking cheese? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give it to that cheese. Look at that little rat go. 
Now, look, you look over your shoulder like someone's going to take away these I puffs. Don't, I don't. Nobody's touching your puff. I don't want a single puff. Now, I told him no, today, this puff. fucking new thing, and everyone's, all the comics are eating these healthy puffs mm -hmm. that don't have corn. They have like... I don't know, like fucking turnip puffs or oh, something. That's weird. Shit. Yeah, there's like a lot of different ones. Vegetable puff. Yeah, there's vegan ones where some of them are made out of egg whites, so they're like protein. I guess they're like keto friendly. Is there any sort of dust on them? There's for me like to... chickpea. There's not a fuck. Yeah, chickpea is a big yeah. one. Yeah. There there's is dust. A... Some there is dust, but it's not. It's like vegan dust. So I it's never not saw made... any dust. Yeah. I want to see them try. Now the funny thing is, I always thought the puff was the best part. Chris thinks the outer cheese is the this, best part. This tasty, savory cheese dust is I, the best part. Can you just answer, what is your problem with the puff? Why don't you want the puff? It's too hard for his teeth. <laughs> I can't use my mouth on this. All right, people are calling it hippies. Hippies, hippies yeah. I've I guess it's a hippie, you know, which is cool. Chris, would you just dip a spoon into a Ziploc bag of Cheeto dust? Yeah, you got any back there? Let's make sure you finish your puffs first. I'm gonna okay. You can help <laughs> <laughs> then you can have your dessert. So yeah, hippies are the chickpea ones. Yeah. But I've also seen some ones that are made of just egg yolk. I don't even know how they get oh, to be that yeah. texture. That's right. They're quite good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd f call them superior to a cheese puff. Ooh. I call them yolkums. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh all the nice people who said stuff about my um, birdie tail. Oh, I know. That was really sweet. Look, I should read some of these. Oh, my God. This is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> bird dog blankie. <laughs> so sweet. I love it so much, Ronnie B. Some postcards from Snuggle Town. <laughs> it's Kathleen from the Bronx. Shrek -a love. I want to cuddle with that dog and that blanket and those Beddingtons. Aw, Shreka. Guess what Silver Surfer said? What? Gangsta. That is pretty gangsta. Is Simply Kate just said, heart, seven bubbly mom. What a great gift. That's nice for you, Gil. Oh, Gail. that is a compliment to me. This is a beautiful thing of me and Birdie, which, did the baby see it yet? She did, yeah. Did she try to keep it? No, she didn't. She, she was aware that it was Birdie. Yeah. And she didn't seem to have any problem with the fact that I was uh, wrapping it up for you. <laughs> Bubbly Mom says, what a great gift. Ro Vegas says, sweet Birdie. She has a sweet thing. Jackie uh, BB says, OMG, where's that from? Um, There's a lot of... Judy Anderson said, uh, such a great gift to snuggle with. Great job, Gail. Blue heart. Aw, oh. thanks for the blue heart. Yeah. Danny Bozo said, great gift for sure. The actor said, what a great blanket. Meg Girl said something interesting. Mm -hmm. An orange heart and then two purple hearts. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people are asking where I got it from. Yeah. Now, I'll give uh, the website out, but this is, you know, this is just, it's not an ad. This is just, you know, for them. How much it's, you getting paid? <laughs> get, it's Pay all called the getphotoblanket.com. And I'll tell you this, you know it's not an ad because it's like, make sure you get it early. You know what I mean? You took know, forever. It took a long time. I was not, whatever you think that they say, triple that. That's how long it'll take to get to you. But then when it showed up, I was very pleased with the quality. What is it again? It's getphotoblanket.com. Um, we could repeat that to some of these people. Mm-hmm. Or you could do it on the Gale thing. Yeah. Um, somebody uh, responded to your video, too. Oh, what'd they say, Ron? What a fat creep. Really? I think they're the fat creep. How do you know? That's why you're the fucking best at roasting people. Nobody would ever think of that. Uh, somebody wrote this to me, Joe Turbo. Yeah. What a great blanket, Ron. Mm -hmm. Cam from two says, wow, Ron, that looks like one hell of a blanket. Dot, 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 and dog. <laughs> Michael says, good looking pup. Cozy, too. <laughs> Listening on demand. <laughs> uh, this one, D Sparks says, great blanket, better dog. Heart. Truth. Bruce Knight says, great blanket, worth the wait. It was, actually. All right, Captain Crunch Kenny said this. I bet it feel good to run a batch in that blanket. <laughs> that blanket is not batch material. No. 
That's bestiality. That's that's sacred. I wish there was an unheart you could give somebody <laughs> like him. A fart. You could give a heart or a fart. Dude, like we're gonna fucking get an app going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got, literally would make fart come out of your phone in that person's face. Like I got thirty-seven hearts, but eleven farts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I tell you what Mrs. FD said? Uh, beautiful dog I've ever, most beautiful dog I've ever seen. Two muffin rabbits said, "What up, dog?" <laughs> she can't hear you, dude. Redbeard said, "She's a cutie." <laughs> Oh, well, some people are saying some mean shit about her all too. Oh, it's not the time That's understandable. place for that. One of the thing is what they were saying Earl was when he was young. Oh, no. Yeah. What? Oh, no. Yeah. Here, take a sexy picture of me sucking my fingers, Earl. Oh, okay. Okay, taking the headphones off for that one. Why? He's just sucking fingers. Oh, my God, it sounded really bad. Um, everyone sucks their fingers at one point or another. Oh, Gail. man, that was gross, dude. Whatever. Your fingers smell gross. I'm sitting here watching you. Excuse me, I'm trying to eat the cheese ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Some people are kind of grossed out if I'm reading any of these things, Chris. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so you suck, well, wait till they hear that finger suck. It was horrible. Um, so the hippies are egg whites. Mm -hmm. egg, egg white. whites yeah. I guess they take the yolk out of it Yeah. leave the yolk in see what happens I'll tell you what it would be a lot more taste <laughs> this said uh, <laughs> Douglas Baker said Chris sounds like a fat fucking chipmunk eating sunflower seeds Looks like why, why call me a fat chipmunk you could just say chipmunk Cam also said Chuck had possibly the first street joke he ever heard a lot of Bugs Bunny talk for some reason, people are bringing up Blue Bell ice cream down south. I don't know why. That's, why, I that's wonder. strange. Do they have some of these people said they can't take dust? the cheese puff munching in their head anymore? Really? Well, I assure you, it tastes delicious. I don't know if that's going to make them change their minds, Chris. Well, maybe they'll, you know, get some of their own cheese puffs. This guy said, "I like the sounds of Chris enjoying his puffs and then uh, talking with his mouth full." <laughs> that's surprising. Mm -hmm. Some people have, you know, a fetish. This is my ASMR. Is that what it is? ASMR? Yeah. Yeah. What's it stand for? No, I have no idea. It's I think a couple of long names in there. We had to do one of those with Earl. Put Earl in there. Hi. <laughs> I wish I had your balls right here <laughs> next to me. <laughs> <laughs> you could go on fucking one of those Pornhub things and just be eating cheese puffs. I bet fucking... Like, people would be jerking to you. I don't mind if people jerk off to me. It's not on me. <laughs> Why? I just don't want the loads Sounds everywhere. Sounds like somebody's a fucking racist against fucking jack-offs. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you want to break here and uh, come back and have... Uh, is there a friend here? Yes. Go ahead and read the plug for her while we do Dish, and then you read the plug after. Dish Network has developed a new Dish voice remote. Hmm. Now that it's got that Google Assistant built in, your favorite game day recliner because becomes a total home command. Just say the word, and the remote does the rest. It's awesome. Want to know a backup quarterback stats? Ask the remote. Want to watch a different game? Just press the mic button on the remote and say Game Finder. It can even turn down the thermostat if you get into a heated argument about whether or not the receiver's knee was down before he got to the goal line. Uh, Earl, you got to hustle. He's just standing. But if you looked further down, yours doesn't end properly. We don't oh. have the end of the commercial. Oh, my God. You're right. And then he's, I, I pointed out to him, and he's like this. He's <laughs> he's looking at Vito and doing two fingers. Why don't we give them another commercial yes, I think after this, Vito? This is deserve. not the way their commercial should go. But you guys have got to what? Check the work. Care a little bit about your jobs. Who's coming up? Janelle Draper, uh, Twisted Sisters with Ash and Janelle Draper. That's happening tonight, 7.30 p.m. at the Stan Comedy Club in New York City, featuring Janelle, T.J. Miller, Bonnie McFarlane, and more, the standnyc.com for tickets. New tomorrow, York's. Chris. That's tomorrow night. Yeah. 
at the Stan Comedy Club in New York City, featuring Janelle Draper, T.J. Miller, Bonnie <laughs> McFarlane, and more. Go Jesus to the, Christ! Go to the, the show, the StandNYC.com for tickets. It's a great you. show. Yeah, you booked that show yourself, or I, yes, I pro- I book. Produce. I get butts and seats. We sold out the upstairs stage, and so we moved downstairs to the main stage. Congratulations! No, I'm just getting warmed up for you to come in whenever you want, Ron. You know, uh, I was there last night, and yeah. all the people from Moon Tower, all the Austin people, are like, "This show is crazy." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They're like, "This uh, the lineup should." Get. I go, "Yeah, the greatest fucking comics are in here." You know, yeah. pounded it. And then they loved that stage. They loved that it. it had a monitor. A lot of places don't have a monitor where you can hear your voice. Yeah. We always in the theater we go, we want a monitor. And they're like, What do you need a monitor for? You're not having feedback. Because the comic feels better. Florentine is the one who said we gotta have a monitor right. every time. And that changes it completely. Changes yeah. it. Now, uh and that show was so much fun last night. And I saw you right after Yeah. You and crushed. It, and then you know what she goes? She goes and this felt weird to me, she goes how can you be, and I just started talking to her, oh, you're coming in tomorrow. She goes, wait, how can you be this chill after just doing your set? <laughs> what do you like after a set? Oh, I get, if I crush the way you do, I mean, I'm just like on another level. It's the, it's what keeps me going back. I you're have excited? A high. Yeah, I'm yeah, super I don't get pumped. That. You were so calm before and after. You're like, I stay, you were like, I stay the same. And I'm like, wow, that's, I think that's the key to longevity, maybe. I'm looking at it as like, is this a good tip? Because... I'm often nervous. Thank you. Janelle's these... always looking for good tips, and she always looks the better herself. Mm-hmm. Where I do. Yes. I do. I'm going to be honest. If you take our staff, they look to <laughs> so it can be uh, worse. Yes, yeah, some don't even respond when you send them messages. Right. So you, and what do you like after a bad set? Oh, man. God, I try to just let it go and remember, like, I'm loved. I'm worthy. This is this doesn't make me a good person. But sometimes I get real down about it. Depending on who's in the audience. If no one's in the audience, I care about like, whatever. Yeah. But if it's one that I've hyped up and I have people there, what if it's all TV executives? Would that so make you I feel have, better? Good. <laughs> I have done that. I did because I work in TV. So I did invite. Like I had had a rookie mistake. Like five years ago, I invited, you know, all of the big wigs from AMC right. Networks to come see me. Actually, one of the, one of the times I crushed in front of the CEO of AMC, that was awesome. That helped me. Then he gave me gigs in the office with like coworkers and stuff, and I got to roast them. Another time, though, I invited. I was like, "Oh, that went well. Let me do it again." And then I just totally bombed, and I like couldn't look at them for like a week. Oh, and it's tough yeah. when you bomb on like raunchy personal material too, and you're just like, "Shouldn't have wore this shirt. I feel like a floozy. This isn't really me." I just like, but it's okay. I'll tell Growing you this. Pains. I would never. If somebody in my office invited me and there was other people, even if they were bombing, it would sound like they were killing. Because I would be laughing. Oh, yeah. You know, I laughing it up. Somebody. Chris, how you, you doing would... on your cheese puffs? This is the <laughs> way Chris <laughs> eats cheese like puffs. Corn, co- corn yeah. Yeah. Would you like a puff? How you know? <laughs> sure, can you blow it in my way? Puff, puff, pass. Mm. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Do you lick your fingers I after? He's, he's, yeah, I suck faster. I suck finger, yeah. It's like a chicken wing. It's like, where's yeah. the bone marrow in there? It's delicious. Uh, That's the just only way. Chris, you want to give the <laughs> plugs to the other guys so you don't have to Kayla, go know how you do it here. Puffing? I mean, my uh, my plug is covered in orange dust. I'll right take now. care of it for you. <laughs> We've got Janelle Draper in studio with us. Twisted Sisters with Ash and Janelle Draper is happening tomorrow, 7.30 at the Stan Comedy Club in New York City. StanNYC.com. Uh, Janelle, TJ Miller, Bonnie McFarlane, and more. Now, uh, Dana was supposed to come in with her. They're buddies. And Dana is at the cardiologist, believing she's what, having a heart attack? Yeah, she's 28 going on 80. We don't know what's going on with her, but she wanted me to specifically plug her Instagram handle if anyone wants to send her some Get Well cards or oh my God, or so spike right. her follower count. Um, now, she's just he, greedy. She's, here's, here's the thing. She's having a panic attack. I know. I talked to her. I said, calm down, take deep breaths. But, you know, she did faint last week, so I'm not sure. People with panic can, attacks yeah, faint. you can oh, faint really? from a panic attack. Yes, yeah, from getting all amped up. Earl used to faint all the time from Earl, panic really? attack. Yeah. Nothing, right? I'd oh. say to Earl, did you get your work done? And he would faint. Oh, my God. Just quiver in the boots. And- yeah. Yeah, that was um, that was not a great episode. Great <laughs> episodes where I would just have just randomly faint in places. Didn't want you faint in front of our boss too. Like uh, boss came up from, like the president of the whole company, and he was talking to us, and 
He said to Earl, he goes, uh, anything that you would be interested in? And Earl went, and they were all out to dinner in a nice place. And I was like, uh, uh. and then he just put his head down on the person next to him and went out. Uh, and he's like, what is going on? And I go, this happens all the time. Earl's fine. He goes, but he's, he goes, he's sick. Do we need to get him to the hospital? I go, no, he's going to be back in about 20 seconds. No. I go, it's best to act like we didn't even see anything happen. But we were all laughing. <laughs> oh, my God. You needed smelling salts. Earl, did you get that checked out? Or you? Uh, yes, I did. Um, multiple times. You had a cold or something? No. He said his asshole was too tight. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, every time that he tried to poop, it was yeah. plopped up. So you loosened up. it up? Yeah, they gave, me some, it out? they gave me some uh, antibiotics and made me sick for nine for days. Asshole? No, not for my... Why well, can't anybody get smell? antibiotics anytime they want them? Because it's a fake thing that'll make you better. What? Like, you don't faint and then need antibiotics. It's bullshit. Also, now he says he blacks out. So he's doing the same thing. It's just, it's just mental, said not I physical. I blacked out. What, didn't you say you rage blackout? Yeah, Earl on multiple occasions has lost his shit and then just, he says blacked out. He says he just goes to another place. Yeah, when I get upset, I mean, most people get upset. They don't do rational things. They what? do stupid things. No, what? That's what? Just, what? I disagree. <laughs> Now You're describing you, the Hulk, dude. This is not. By the way, every time he rages, it's about white people. It's true. Mm -hmm. He yeah. fucking hates white people. Maybe he has a reason. I don't know. I wasn't I don't raised know what like it him. Is. Yeah. <laughs> we've yeah, all. I don't know why. We, we've we're been nothing but nice. You know. We're so friendly. I mean, we're in here and you're over there, so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, we want to keep glass. you uh, behind the glass, or all. <laughs> now like we all. Let, let me let me just say something about New York. It's filled with disrespect. There's just too many people for you to get to respect. But Janelle was going through something that you wanted to tell us about the oh. way somebody treated you. Yeah, it. You know, I was very. Ex I can't believe Chris, you're actually eating them like that. I thought that was like a. a That's the only way to eat them. Look, wow. If, if you want, come over and look come at the pile look that he's eating this way. It. It's pretty disgusting. So, yeah. I saw those. I thought those were going to be, you know, passed around. No, those, no, are, those are no, those are already no, those clean. Are already I clean. thought this was a joke. Wow. Okay, so that's all toss. Interesting. I feel like you guys should t do an Instagram post for that. So people well, get a we visual. want to, but Earl took 60 fucking things when there was two, and then never again. Oh, oh man. <laughs> all right. Well, I saw I got distracted. Yeah, so I got very excited. I saw one of your um, staff uh -huh. on the subway. Which one? Um, Vito. All right, oh. so you see Vito. Yeah. I saw Vito, and I was oh. very, I was pumped about it. And what I, was this? This was like back in November. All right. And so heart starts pumping. I'm like, oh, I know this guy. I get so excited when I see people I know. You know, I'm very excitable. And uh, I'm like, oh, maybe we could talk, you know, see, shoot the shit. <laughs> and then I I try to speed up because you're moving fast, Vito. And then I, I actually, I tripped going up the stairs. It's so embarrassing at the subway. This is like <laughs> one of those working girl movies that they do. In the, you know what I mean? <laughs> like the working girl who's involved in show business. Yes, hey, this yeah. I see sense. a guy from the radio station. This is great. Yeah. Oftentimes in a rom-com, it's how we show that like a hot girl isn't perfect. She's clumsy and she falls over totally. all the time. That's oh, yeah. that's oh, a nice. good one. Yeah, okay. Oh my God. Oh. I, oh. I spilled my coffee, you know. I uh, right. so you fell and then I tripped. It was embarrassing, and the guy behind me is like, "Are you okay, ma'am?" I'm like, "I'm fine." I just was trying to say hi to someone, as if that's gonna make it better. And then I keep going, and he's at a pace I just can't keep up with. So we never stopped. You never broke stride. Oh my god! You know, look, I don't remember this happening, but I'm sure that I just had to get to work or uh -huh. something. Well, it was down at. Houston. Oh yeah, so that's where no. he works out every day. Oh, that's, work, yeah. So yeah, he works out down before. Chelsea Piers every morning. Yeah, and then comes up this way. So that was it. You never got a chance to so say then anything. I, I thought I sealed the deal with a little DM. You know, slide yeah. in there, oh. say hey. Friendly DM, platonic. You know, hey, I think I saw you. Is that you? Hey, Vito, what's up? And nothing. I mean, I, I don't follow you on Instagram, so it probably got lost. Yeah, it's not no, hurt. That you hurt still a get them. No, we get them all to, the time. It goes to follow requests. I don't really check those. You should. <laughs> That's part of the whole reason why you're on social media. You always got to check social. your follow requests. Oh, you're, you're saying that he's handled this socially wrong, Chris? Uh, 100% socially wrong. And sure, I'm covered in cheese dust right now, but I think um, I'm correct. So, <laughs> a lot uh, of it is trapped right look, there. My the granddaughter bunch. at school, she's going down sliding boards. <laughs> So cute. She is cute. <laughs> she has fun at school. She does. Oh, she enjoys fun. it. You got good updates, good photo updates. Yeah. That's cute. I don't know what I'll do when she like goes to real school and I'm not getting oh, you like get... pics all day. Like, you can just kind of sneak around and like take stealthy photos for yourself. 
I'm well, surprised uh, classrooms aren't live streamed at right at this point. Where there's just a camera and you just check in on them, like they're dogs or something. You would want to check in on like a... dogs, like our children are like dogs. Well, That's they have like the dog cam or whatever, right? <laughs> He so wants to throw gold at your kids. Wait, how old do you think um, your daughter, what's her name again? I'm trying to remember. Juju. Juju. How old do you think she'll be when you give her um, a phone? A phone? Two? God, yeah. I mean, right <laughs> she, now she's she FaceTiming me by herself already at one and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, that's so yeah. freaking cute. The thing that I think is like really embarrassing is that she knows which phone belongs to which family members. Really? That's how much we use them. <laughs> yeah. So she'll just be like, Mama's? And I'm like, Yeah, that one is mine. She's yeah, like a human version of Find My iPhone. You're yeah, like, Juju. Exactly. So Where'd it go? She's that like, phone. How many puffs she got left, Chris? Oh, I got plenty, Ron. I mean, this is a big ass bag of fucking I puffs. Love that he, That's a family size. Yeah. Getting into the microphone, like it's our ambient uh, soundtrack of yeah. the day. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> you want a tight ship in here, you guys? Oh love- my god! If you would hear the sound of him cleaning himself, <laughs> what? Like a cat cleaning her paws. I feel like this oh. is how. Yes. Yeah, I think this is kind of how I would eat an apple. Like it's like sort of a workout, but right. this is right. a little bit you more. You might actually be burning more calories yeah. than you're taking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a spit take with cheese dust. <laughs> I think that your point is a is a well made one though. Yeah. This could be a great way to lose weight for people. <laughs> Bring them to the gym. Make it part of Planet Fitness's new model. You know, they have pizza on Fridays and and cheese, uh, cheese puff. When there's a gym giving out pizza. Yeah, every Friday, Planet Fitness. <laughs> Sounds great. Mm-hmm. Somebody said this to us. Uh, this is how Chris relates to the kids that he lures in. <laughs> I don't lure children anywhere. You just oh. said you want to put a hidden camera in children's I, yeah, live I think, stream. Whatever. I think you guys are going to like this one. Whatever. They called him Mumford and Crumbs. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. I, I'm so Cash happy I got that line out without laughing. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's bitch thirsty, they say about him. Love it. More and, caption uh, contests. It's like he's eating wings. Yeah. Mm. I mean, especially when you see that pile of discarded bones. I'm building a pyramid. It's like, Cheese puff bones. Yeah, it's like a proud pile. Like you're... You're quite excited about it. Vito, why do you still look upset that this thing about how fucking rude you are got brought up? One, I don't think I'm rude. I think I'm a pretty polite person. You're, You're very pretty rude. fucking rude. It you did not rude answer. You didn't, didn't stop. And he's rude to me, too. And, and you even say if you, didn't recognize you guys made eye contact, but he didn't. Him. Actually, I don't, we didn't make eye contact. I think you so did. So I if just... you don't make eye contact with somebody, you have nothing to say. No, I know. I understand. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't do anything wrong. I just thought maybe you'd check your Why wouldn't DMs. you just check your DMs or at least way see. back? Did you read it? Why did she slid in? Well, them? one, is that the problem? if I didn't make eye contact, then I don't know why this is getting brought up to my bosses at work. <laughs> Can I just tell you something, Vito? Bosses? I feel so honored. I know. <laughs> it's so really important. You are- uh, I'm glad you've told me this, Janelle. Joe, uh, Joe, the uh, manager down at the uh, at the stand, he's a Syrian Jew. He said, <laughs> I, he said, Wait, he's right. Yeah, you're right. He never heard back from Vito after Vito became full time. So now he goes like this: How's full time Vito? Still too good oh, for people. FT over there. I love and, Joe. Um, I go, uh, Vito hates Syria. No. <laughs> oh my he does. God. He's so fucking glad that <laughs> we abandoned those uh, mm-hmm. people. He's very glad. Since you Vito you lost don't want the weight. Refugees here? <laughs> I love <laughs> refugees of all kind. <laughs> I love these cheese puff spit takes. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta get one of those portrait I've, modes. I've got a new theory. He's not gonna finish this by the end of the show because I think his jaw hurts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah. is this taste still there, Chris? Oh yeah, it's there. It's all there. It's like you're drinking a fine red wine, but it's the cheese. Instead, you get orange yeah. teeth there. Yeah, orange really disgusting. does. Because pro- I was explaining, normally with a cheese puff, you're pushing it past the front mm. of your teeth, so he's catching it oh, all catching here it. in the front teeth. <laughs> do portrait mode for that. That's going to look beautiful because then you can blur the. He, know, he doesn't yeah. even understand portrait Let mode. Let me do it, please. Let Gail, it. Let Gail do it. Let Gail do it. She takes good pictures. Don't well, faint, faint, Earl. Don't faint. He's fucking. Hey, Earl. Away. This is the other thing. Sit down here. Would you let when he's done take his fingers and put dots right on your head with it? <laughs> Would you be willing to do that? I'm game. All right. Whoa! Without any money exchange. All right. Go over. All right. Uh, All right. Chris, press, the, press uh, four dots into Earl's okay. head. And then Gail be ready to portrait mode that one, too. Here we go. All right. Come on, Earl. Taking video. See, cheese puff. Wait, I don't have visual. Yeah, you got to turn around. 
Now we're gonna do it once he. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can take one there to catch up on it, but yeah. now. Curious. Yeah. Didn't show. No. <laughs> wow. These are. Uh, yeah, too bad. Really For some reason, I thought it was gonna come off on him like it did you. <sighs> All right. Sorry, Earl. I took two pictures of this and tell me what you like. Do you like this with the blurred background? Very I do. Pretty, or do you like this one where you can see it? No, I like Girl, the blurred background. Fan. Okay, cool. Pound it. I'm going to send this yes. over. Good man. Oh, really likes to I'm wipe excited off his to forehead. be here for this. This is a well, it's, it's um, a perk of my all. day. Yeah, this now, is. You will always be welcome back, Dana. Never again. Finally. Oh, no, she's worried that she won't be invited back. We have to have her back. No, no one believes her that she's sick. She's a fucking liar. She sent me a photo, actually. Oh, it's oh she sent you an old good, photo? Yeah. Oh, that's fucking great. <laughs> Super yeah, smart, Dana. <laughs> she's no, probably fucking good. drinking all night because she's an alcoholic. <laughs> she's probably not. banging she's... some random dude or dudes. And that's not a problem, but she shouldn't be doing that if she's going to be coming oh. on the show. You start oh. this slut shame and yeah. put yourself out of it. I like that. It. Yeah. It's like a wo the <laughs> wokest slut shame I've ever heard. Oh, I'm going to see if I can find it, but it is Slutty. You know what? I'm going to her story to see if she's what she's been. Oh, she has nothing on her, on her story. So Shocking. Maybe. Dana Cavalieri at Instagram. She's a liar and a drunk. It's fine. Now, yep. the, the thing about Dana is she knew this was coming up and I, then she plans her heart attack, I guess, for today. You want to know what's funny, too, yeah. I will say, is that the last time we were meant to see you guys together, we were going to go to the cellar because you were doing the um, recording, podcast recording uh -huh. with Colin Quinn. Yes. So we're all, all excited. She got us on the list. I think Deborah hooked us up. It was awesome. I couldn't wait. At great outfit. I was like, I'm going to go see the crew tonight. Yeah. She's like, I can. I'm not feeling well. She bailed on me last minute. Same time. And I, is it, I go, is it, Benning, is it Bennington and, and team? Is this what it is? Yeah. yeah. Here's is what it, it is. Is Gale? Like, what's going on? Could be. Could the deal be is this. She feels guilty because she stole from me. There was a lot of money missing out of the office. No. Yeah, $1,700. Wow. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Dana fucking took it. Are you kidding? It, when? It no. seems like Richard's a lot, but it's not a lot if you're buying Coke. But what about Dan Perlman? Wasn't he also an intern here? Dan's great. Yeah, yeah he's never stolen. Dan's him. very respectful. Only, he always comes in. You only get interns that are like Dan or Dana or... Yeah, we just do the Ds. Danny. Dougie. Mm -hmm. Daryl. People don't even remember this. Dougie Fresh was an intern for us. That was crazy. Oh, remember Daria? Yeah, I love Daria. <laughs> you got a D thing going yeah. on. Yeah. Now, um... The thing is, is then Vito <laughs> was one, but he just went by the name Dick for the way he treated people in the trains. I don't think I'm a dick. I think a dick is somebody who throws their friends under the bus like she just How would she oh, throw, oh, how'd she throw you under the bus? No, not me. Dana. She just went out of her way to bring up another time Dana Wait, canceled what, what on are you, you in love with Dana that you have to fucking Whoa. say? Oh, Romeo and Juliet. No, I just yeah. think this is, a, this is a trash quality in a person. <laughs> trash quality. <laughs> what are you talking how about? How could you say those things about Dana? Mm-hmm. I wait. I'm it wasn't about Dana. Dana's incredible. Idiot. Dana's a good girl. Yeah. Dana's and one of my best friends. She's amazing. By the way, do you guys like Chris Rockabilly look today? I he's, do. Yeah, he's in it. I yeah. like it so much. And I also want to mention Twisted Sisters with Ash and Janelle Draper happening tomorrow, 7.30 at the Stan Comedy Club here in New York City. StanNYC.com for tickets. We're not going to take, take it because we wear lots of makeup. So the Atlantic Records sent a cease and desist letter to the stand. Because You're <laughs> fucking kidding me. <laughs> because of we were Twisted Sisters. Oh, oh that's God. what we were Twisted Sisters. So we're like, all right, we'll change it to Sisters. And they were still pissed about it. But Oh, shut up. They haven't fucking made a new record in I know. a million years. What are you worried about? I don't know. That their fans are going to show up? Well, we did have a couple. Dressed in makeup? <laughs> <laughs> we did have a couple people come to the first show thinking it was like a co uh, a concert, cover like a cover uh -huh. band. <laughs> These two British girls, but they're like, this was even better. Oh, that was a terrible We thought we were going to see a I nice them. cover band. Yeah. Instead, we got the giggle poofs going. Oh, man. Do, 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 do. Hey, you guys want to hear some um, sad news? Yeah, kind yeah. of. Uh, Not really. What? No, I can't even find it. But, um... Carl Ruiz's uh, thing, they just put up something, I don't know whether you saw it, but like the stove as a tribute to Carl and all that kind of stuff in the that. kitchen. What's it called? His uh, restaurant was something Cubano, American Cubano or something? Yeah. They closed. Oh. 
Oh, oh that's shit. That's really sad. Yeah. That's really, really sad. Mm, Sorry mm, to hear mm, that. Mm, mm, mm. Chris, I think it's where do you continue to eat through that news? I don't think it could go on without him. I think that was the problem. It yeah. was one, when it's one person's dream like that. Yeah. Should I know who Carl is? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, you don't know Carl? There's a lot of people I don't know. I'm sorry, you live in New York, though, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Thing. I'll Google. No wonder you stood up Colin Quinn. <laughs> By the way, just because fucking Dana is fake and sick, it didn't mean that you couldn't come. And I would introduce you to Colin. You'd be b- booking him on your shows right now. Oh, that'd be cool. I, I didn't want to go alone. I should have came. I know. Yeah, you're never oh, you afraid. Yeah. I know. And I, I came here today alone, so thanks, Dana. Were you nervous? Oh, not nervous. I was, I was more excited. I just said, I hope right. they still want me. Get rid but of that see, dead weight is what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> yeah. You know who we don't want is Dana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, this now I, thought, I didn't think that before. At first, I thought Chris is, is not like now. Dana for yeah. years, like five years. Yeah, she's awful. What happened uh, to you guys? Vito doesn't like uh, like you. Yeah, Vito never has liked me really. So why, like, Vito? I thought we could have a moment there in the subway where I was going to say, "Hey, we cool," and then yeah. instead you decided to use it against me. But why did you run out of Because I don't like to talk to people I don't like. I don't like wasting my time. That's kind of weird. It's just like the two of you guys feuded with the two of them. It's just like. It's kismet, really. Yeah. It's like when guy, I know uh, two buddies that d- d- married twins, and then this is what I said. I go, "Oh, do you guys ever fuck the other twin?" And they both got mad at me, oh, and I'm why? like, "What is the difference?" I mean, come on, everybody's got to yeah. wonder about that. Twins have the same genitals, right? Totally. I mean, they're, they're twins. No, they each have their own genitals. S- no, but I can join. Yeah, unless no. they're by the pussy. Chris, <laughs> Chris wouldn't swap with me before, so I don't know why he's acting like he's a bum. Yeah, above. you said yeah. you wouldn't wife swap with Vito. And why we're basically you? twins. Oh, but yeah. much better than you. But Vito, would you be willing to argue with Dana why, and let Chris argue with Janelle? And then, you know, that's kind of the swapping that you guys I don't do. know. Dana's pretty cool. I like Dana. You know, I don't like... This one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> this person in the room. She's running a cool fucking show right now. That's Janelle great. A great show. Yeah. TJ Chris Miller, yeah. movie star, is there? Bonnie McFarlane. Yeah. I would go, but Which I have to go to my friend's was basketball Was hanging out game. with Bill Murray the other day. I can't believe that. Oh yeah, I saw that on yeah. Instagram. I cannot believe that. Somebody told me they're dating now. What? Wow. Yeah. That well, Voss too. Okay. <laughs> the three of them are dating. <laughs> the three of them. Oh, uh, I have a friend, a couple of friends that are twins, and they they had a. They hooked up with the same person. Really? Yeah. Same yeah, time? Yeah, it's like a boy- one of them had a boyfriend and the two of them fooled around with him. But at the very same time? Yeah, same time. And it was unexpected. Do you got any pictures of these No, twins? I have no photos. I'm, but um, Just curious to what they like look a, like. Like a reality show or like uh, an episode of a reality show where it was like two twin sisters dating the same guy. There was a season of Big Brother with those two twins, and they no. swapped out. Was it? Do- the, I mean, how is that related to? <laughs> they didn't that swap cheese out. dust is going to your brain. <laughs> <laughs> cheese overload. It's so good. It was the dumbest when, thing I've ever heard. When he Be totally laughs, honest. the I dust. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> when he laughs, the dust that emits looks like a gymnast chalking up. It's so crazy. Oh, it's so gross. That's a perfect analogy. Yeah. Oh, no wonder Vito runs away from people because he's shy. <laughs> Are you shy, Vito? No, I'm not shy. I just you're a shy guy. You too shy, shy. shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck shy. you, fuck, fuck you, Vito. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. You know what? Here's the thing today. You don't have any heat because it's all about cheese puffs mm-hmm. over here. He's the one capturing the public's imagination. I got my puff on, bro. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and you need just... all the friends you need, can get, bro. Yeah. I have enough friends. I got a good <laughs> amount of just friends. Answer your fucking DMs, bro. Uh, it's all right. I mean, he didn't want it. He's he's busy. Um, I just want to get along with you, Vito. I want to. I want to end it. Well, this Sorry. was a good start. I think. I got yeah, a lot I of thought, things yeah, going I'm on. trying to bridge the gap here. So by the way, Gail, look at me answering all these requests that are coming in today. Oh my God, Vito Let's must be getting hit up a lot. You must be getting a lot. No, to- I just, I just none. I get none. I just saw that one come in, and I said, "You didn't see it, Vito, because I would have. Se- it would have said seen. Not oh, if I shit. didn't read it. Oh, so shit. now we know he's a liar. No, I saw. I literally watched it come in, and I went. I'm going to not open it so it doesn't come up as red. And then I went about my day and lived my life, and I enjoyed it. Wow, I'm so sad. Man, where does that come from, man? Yeah, I know. Why There's a darkness. Did you do this to Joe, the Syrian Jew? No, I love this? Joe. Joe's a great person, and I love that man. Why the finger point? There's a fine line between love and hate, you know, Vito. I feel it's like you might love me. a line between love and hate. It's all passion. I know it's that. It's true. Now I'm like, should I not even be drinking this coffee Vito gave me? What if he... Uh, 
Came poisoned in. it. No, you yeah. put you put milk and sugar in it. That's your own poison. <laughs> oh, that's good, that's you really know. That's really cool. That's a good fucking thing. Chris Lowe, you're sucking on cheese puffs, but I can't do it. Right, let me see sugar. the bag. How many puffs you got left? I mean, there's a, this, look, see, this is the thing. It's a family-sized bag. some puffs, I mean. Will this make you feel better <laughs> that you can pick it up uh, tomorrow and finish some puffs then? <laughs> what would you rather do? Crush it all today and get it over with? <laughs> Here's the thing. There's some puffs that I just can't um, suck all the cheese off of or else they break. Uh-huh. And when they break, it really upsets me. <laughs> Oh, that's like a weird puff. OCD. Yeah, that is a weird. It is like because I have a. Your teeth are so orange. Dude. Why? What do you think? Why do you think? <laughs> this should be a commercial, like the perfect way to eat a cheese puff. Yeah, that isn't. The like perfect the way to pop it right in your mouth. Yeah. I'm building a I nice. I mean, with Reese's, a lot of people yeah. eat it different ways. Oreos, people eat different. Right. Everybody eats a cheese puff the same way. How do you eat a cheese stick? I really don't eat, like the sticks. You don't like I the find sticks. them to be disgusting. The puff is magic. Puffs where it's at. Yeah. Isn't Matter of fact, weird? when we were talking about first songs I ever heard, the first song I ever heard was my grandmother singing mm-hmm. when I was little. I told you about that before. Oh, yeah. And she had cheese puffs, and I was sitting, I was so little, I'm like standing up, and she's singing, and I was like, I'm going to keep acting like I like her singing and eating these cheese puffs. But in my memory, the cheese puff is gigantic because I have my little tiny baby hands. Aww. And then I thought to myself, two things, I'm going to act like I like this, I'll get more puffs. And two... Oh, she's old. And I don't know why I'd be that little and feeling sad that she was so old. old I was thinking, like, she's so old and I'm so young. Yeah. You know? I love the the giant cheese puff, though. Like, you forget to scale the way it is for a kid. How'd you eat the puff? Uh, Like a gentleman, just... Puff biting. I mean, it took me about 12 bites to get a puff down. Mm -hmm. But also, I remember thinking, oh, this... I never want to eat anything but cheese puffs from this point oh, on. This good. is unbelievable. And it was my first time. I think I, I was nine months old. He's making a cheese puff graveyard pi- pyramid <laughs> now. It's I mean, check it out, Rod. I mean, it's pretty balanced. Are you getting pictures of that? Oh, uh, man. And Earl, you, you, need, you need yeah. to get Maybe other angles of the of the pyramid. It didn't send like the way I took it. Isn't that weird? Oh, that sucks. I know, because look at how angle. I sent it. Much better. How did that happen? Chris, what happens when you grab one sense. that breaks? It's upsetting to me. I have some ones that broke, and I just I just don't like when it happens. So I just like, could have been the one that Earl said. I don't know why he would send the his. casualties. Yeah, Those are the casualties. Of, okay. Fucking bullshit puffs. Why wouldn't you have it with him in the background? You're a fucking professional photographer, and you missed the cool picture. You got him in the background. You taking pictures oh, yeah. of the puff. I think that's Earl. You want to show the puff? Yes, I want the pile with, me with that it. motherfucker in the background. You see how fucking better the shot that is? Oh, this is amazing. Instead of the back of a fucking computer screen? Bro, this is probably why Earl faints. You're yelling at him over the cheese puff. No, no, no. no this is fu- I, I, I'm yelling at him over show business. Yeah, show He's business, He's got to get the right fucking shot. Can't just be fucking taking random bull... Okay. No, see, you're looking like that, and it's fucking up. Get to work, Chris. Get it. <laughs> Earl said this to me, even though I have to explain it. You told me to get the, the pile of the puffs in. <laughs> I feel like this has got to go up on the regular then because I'm so proud of that shot. Crazy. I mean, it bring. I that mean, was amazing. Yeah. You should tag Cheese Puff Cheeto, see if you can get a yeah. sponsorship. Hashtag ad. What, what's happening with this pile when you're done, Chris? I'm, I'm really curious to, to Earl's see. Gonna eat I them. don't know. I guess, yeah, Earl can have them. Are you going to, like, uh, Smash them or I would never destroy it. All right, by the way, that restaurant is La Cub- Cubano NYC. It's a fancy mm-hmm. restaurant, and it was. I know how much it cost to fucking get the place off the ground, it was crazy. By the way, I found out what the nut is for the stand last night, what they owe every month. Oh, yeah, oh, shit. I'd love to know that. I know, but I felt like it was said in confidence. Take a guess. What do you think the rent is every month? Their rent? Oh, God. That's yeah. a big space. I yeah. know. Big I space in Manhattan. Imagine. I mean, it's 20, weird. 15, K? I'm terrible with numbers, so. That's well, just you're a, a girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Girls don't know numbers or sports. Or directions. No. Or... No, I feel like I can't say. Okay. Gail, I'll tell you, I'm not going to tell Chris. No, please. He loves numbers. <laughs> I mean, I'm only, want, only one that took... How was my guess? What do you guys think about my guess? 15K. I you can't thought, say that. I have what a thought Chris on think it. Of it? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's big. It's upstairs, downstairs. They do have amazing food and amazing drinks. I have no idea. 
It's like Chris 20 of my apartments. How many times are you going to take the same picture now, Earl? Did you get a good picture? Yes. So okay. why would you take the same picture again? <laughs> Here, can, this is my I wish there was a camera crew. This could be a freaking sitcom. But uh, but you understand why I get frustrated, right? Yeah. Gail captured it, I feel like. I mean, I was over there for two seconds. Yeah. I know. <laughs> she got a, like, but a award winning. Shot that didn't get up. Why, you, you done, it Chris? No, no, this is just, I just well, that's oh, ridiculous. The, the, yeah, put I the mean, ending is, shot on there. Glasses are a nice touch. Earl, you're putting it up like it's an ending shot where it's really just getting going. This He's going to also like finish more. this tomorrow. <laughs> There's no way we're going to be able to move oh. this pyramid, Ron. Get me a, a picture of me drinking the water. I'm going to try to finish this whole bottle of water by the end of this. Stop it. I'm making that up. Uh-huh. Why would if I drank a bottle of water, would it be a big deal? <laughs> Janelle, you still have the same boyfriend? I do, yeah. Wow, oh, that's a while now, I right? I know. Maybe like a year and a half. Are you thinking this is the one? I think so. Really? Wow. You guys live together? We live together, yeah. Oh, yeah, then it's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Moved in in yeah. September. Oh, I was going to ask you guys about this. So... I'm watching Shrill because I'm doing the 80 thing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Now, you know the guy who played her boyfriend in the first yeah. year? He was kind of a dick. But then you kind of find out that he's a man boy. Mm-hmm. So he definitely likes her, blah, blah, blah. But he still does stupid things. Can you be with someone like that? Could a woman... Like, here's one of the things. He's like this. She has some big thing that could move her career along. And he's like... Yeah, but that's the same night as Burger League. Oh, my he's God. He's in a Burger League, and he's like, what are you doing in Burger League? And he goes, whoever eats the most burgers gets a free burger. And I'm like, is that a guy you stay with? Mm-hmm. Even though he's mm-hmm. no. nice? Yeah. <laughs> but that... you know. Look, there's not a lot of things that the people I've dated have had in common. Right. Like, you line these guys up very different in personalities, physically, mm-hmm. race, gender, height. Wow. Right. Wow. Give it to me, like all across the board. But I'm telling you, not a one would I put in that category. I don't feel like I've ever been with a man child, mm. ever. Ooh. It's not my thing. I don't want to be a mommy of a man. I don't like the idea of Hell yeah. That's actually something I think she even said to him. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing right is, up. most people would think that he's a great guy. But, Perhaps I might have fun getting a beer with someone like that. I, I've I've had plenty of friends who's dating that guy, I, I, and I'm oh, like, yeah. he's funny, he's yeah. a nice guy, but it's just not for me twenty four seven. It's not my thing. That what? means you guys have a good relationship. You have good morals, good values. You're not gonna try to take care of anyone. You know what what I mean? A lot of women try to save guys. Like, oh, I'll, oh, I'll yeah. be their nurturing mommy type. Nope. Not yeah. me. Good. Just like Smart. guys that like bro- broken women, they end up the same way. Like it annoys them. When they yes, try to do a exactly. fixer upper, and I'm always like, "But you liked that, you know what I mean?" Exactly. That's what you liked about them in the you first You liked place. that she yeah. was an Instagram model, and now you're saying she looks like a whore. Exactly. Oh, and that, right. I think that that happens a lot with women in the sense that when they're with a guy like that, they they're like, "I I feel more confident because like he's kind of a mess, mm. and I can be myself, and I feel mm-hmm. like I don't have to win him over." He's going to go, I'm lucky to have you, and eventually you're going to resent that. Totally. Eventually you're going to go, wait, I am better than this person. I'm going to yeah, say this, though. Not you're not on the same track. Vito's been glaring at you guys because he feels like you're talking about him, I think. Does that got you angry, Vito? Yeah, it feels a little fucking personal. Why? It feels like somebody's just trying to take more bullshit cheap shots without saying my now, name. But I why? I not even say anything. But do you think of yourself as a man child? I don't, but I can tell when somebody's being hostile and passive aggressive. <laughs> I've dated man children before. I was just giving Gail props for being such a badass, well, empowered female Chris who doesn't need to take care of a man to he, feel good about herself. You've married, I mean, you dated man children. <laughs> yeah. Fucking uh, Chris has dated children. Yeah. <sighs> with a live stream. Yeah. No, I don't want to be with underage people. <laughs> but I, well, but I was thinking about that. You're looking. The fact that he's eating a bag <laughs> of cheese the face. By the way. Uh, I think the f- the sculpture's done. I can't really get it higher than that, or it's the fucking. Collapse. All you gotta do is have a bigger base yeah, for tomorrow. Yeah, by the exactly. time you're done this bag, I'm not <laughs> gonna make you. I'm not gonna start a new bag. Cheese all day. Here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. When the show's over, put in. And if you can't do it tomorrow, you can't do it. But let's not throw this out in case you're ready to break a record. <laughs> you can't yeah. move it. It's yeah, gonna fucking collapse. That. I can Dude, tell. It gets rebuilt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Rome I wasn't say, put rebuilt it in a glass in the day. Case. Put it in a glass case if you can. Put it back in here. Put it back. Like it's fine. Product. Put it the, under a cake, fuck, uh, cake pan. Yeah. You know? I've been saying I need one of those. Earl, could you at least take Don't. responsibility for that? 
Is that something you could take responsibility Earl, from? Do you think you could do that? Oh, okay. Earl, how far got, you got to run? Just say it from right there. Here. The he mic hasn't there. turned on, Earl. He and now, you, and now, the, and now the, the board's covered in cheese dust. For you Christ understand sake. the business, right? Yes, I went to grab a mic. Show. I'm sorry. I know you went to grab a mic, but don't, wouldn't you say to the guy running the board, hey, I need my mic on? I assumed it was already on. Why would you assume Why would that? I have would every fucking mic on in the room? What's he focusing on? Cheese. I'm trying to crush this cheese. fucking you cheese. You act like he's eating a block of cheese, or he's not. Yeah, some dust. Just what are the ingredients? Focusing on the dust and the sculpture right now. There's okay. a lot of dust in your mustache, beard, and <laughs> in betwixt the teeth. I feel like you got some like giddiness, some high going on off this. How do you oh, feel? How do you feel all emotionally, this dust psychologically? In the cheese. Everything is dust in the cheese. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know where I'm put dust in the cheese. Opens bag. Andrew in Indiana. Hey, Andrew. Hey, it sounds like fucking Chris Stanley's a chipmunk chewing in the background. No shit. I wanted to yeah. thank Vito for not being a fat fuck anymore. Vito, yeah. I was thinking this about you, Vito. Wow. Because I saw somebody I know a couple of days ago who regained their weight, right? Uh-huh. And I thought to myself, when he lost weight, I brought it up. <laughs> now I can keep this quiet. Body's back again. Yeah, Looking but back. here's the thing: oh, if you notice with Vito, because it's happened for a while, people people have stopped saying Vito, you look great, and they're just acting like this is his norm. Yeah, yeah. but he works at keeping it like this. But I, you get nothing from society anymore. No, it's over now. Now it's just I'm old news, and um, I'm trying to like change my body even more, and I feel like I won't even get credit for that. Do you notice there's one person who always tells you? You, hey, the only person who checked on you when you were sick. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. Checked you in said a way get said, well. No, not even get well. Feel better. I said feel. You didn't better. want me to get I well. That was okay Once, to though. He was well. sick for over a week. Optimistic. Feel, feel better. better. But he was sick for over a week. Exactly. Bronchitis. I believe you got to check in every day. Any emojis there, or just the? F- no. I think it was just Jesus. feel better. Not even no an exclamation point. Or... Well, Vito, maybe if you had responded to my DM, you would have got a nice little get well oh, message from me. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. Do not got you. Yeah, Vito, you dick. I'm full of get well messages and cards and emojis. Jeez, but you know you, you don't like open your heart friend. to that, Vito. I am a good friend. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And a good person. Oh, thanks. Guys. She's a trash person. No, she's <laughs> now, what, no. what does your boyfriend do? Oh, he um, runs finances for this uh, media events production company in Long Ooh, Island. Oh, yeah, see that, Vito? Yeah. Yeah. Long Island finance, bro. How cool. I mean, it is cool because he Jelly. knows how to save money. Not like a man child that just likes to work oh, out. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about up. you. What does, what does working out have to do with not saving money? That, well, you spend all your money on your fucking Equinox. <laughs> that They're is true. Off the Actually, like, ooh, gotta go. Gotta make girls trip. Ooh, gotta go. My gym membership's $25 a month because I know how to save money. So, <laughs> all right. And if Warren gets elected, you make $120,000 of money you don't know about. That would be great. Don't even pay anything yeah. until after the election. I'm going to hold please, off now. Please vote for her? No, I'm Yang Yang. Oh, my God. Earl, Lord, who are you, le- who you leaning towards uh, a, if you had to vote today? If I had to vote today, I would probably go with Warren. Yeah, really? Yeah, you're Earl, bro. Yeah, he is a Bernie bro who, by the way, said to Warren, I don't see a woman ever being elected president. Jesus. And then when she told that, he said that she's lying. And then I saw Morning Joe going like this. I believe Bernie. I don't think that he would ever say a woman couldn't get elected. And I'm like, okay, you weren't. Neither one of us were there. Yeah, that's a weird we, thing to say. All it's we just should one say word is, against the next. Yeah, well, we say those two people uh, misremembered. One of them is misremembered. Yes. But they go, you know what? I think men don't misremember, but women do I, yeah. because they left. They, I've noticed they lack, lack the memory balls. A lot of uh, <laughs> Bernie Bros that I know, and some. Bernie Chris. lasses. I don't know what to call them. <laughs> Bernie lasses. <laughs> That's Little that. Bernie lasses. Yeah. And I've seen them weighing in on it, and they're acting like they know that she's lying. And yeah. I feel like I can't really comment on who's telling the truth or not. It's a shame these two, you know, narrowly like the very small margin of how they're different yeah. politically. I mean, of everybody on that stage, they're the closest to totally. each other, and that's why and they hurt each yes, other. Yes, they're hurting each other. They hurt each other because they, they both of those. Mention if this fucker was out, I'd have twice as many votes as I have now. Yeah, right. competing for the same. But it's audience. like, like when a couple who lives together they start to fight, or like yeah. when O and A and Jimmy broke up, and people go, "What do you think happened?" I go. I know all three of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
What can I say? And I think I, I wasn't there for any of it. I think who do I know? The right? thing no. that's upsetting for people who maybe love one of them but don't necessarily hate the other, this is a guarantee that you're not going to see them on somebody's cabinet come a situation. Or even the same ticket. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, look, Chris, you look like you're a little sick right now. Ron, I think I'm. Uh, the cheese has gotten to me. I'll be told. I think I got a cheese headache. You know what's really funny? Ew. All you need to do is hang out for another five minutes, slowly eat a couple more, and you would have been a hero. <laughs> Instead, as always, you're a quitter. Now, uh, no quit. I want you to save public. these things tomorrow and, and put the puffs away tonight, Earl. <laughs> That's going to be your job. You don't know. Tomorrow you may want to eat them. You'll who know, know whether who know. you're a winner or a quitter. Who knows? We like, it's like with drinking. A lot of times you're like, I am not drinking anymore this week. Next night, you're like, you know Think what I'd like? It. Like yeah. a little fucking gin and juice right now. A little hair now. of the dog. Yeah. feel better tomorrow. A little hair of the cheese for hair you. Hair of the dog. Remember that, Earl? Nazareth. Now yeah. you're messing with a what? Son of a... Now you're messing with... You can't say bitch? I know, uh, did they ever say it? Yes, they did. Okay. Son of a bitch! Well, not like <laughs> that. They said That's it like men. <laughs> you could play Django with uh, those cheese puffs. Somebody is very Don't. mad, one of those fucking conservative groups, because someone put damn in their commercial. Burger King. What'd they really? say? Damn, like the damn burger. that's a good burger. <laughs> <laughs> Give damn, me a Daniel. damn burger, some damn fries. <laughs> I didn't know that Larry David and uh, Bernie were related. Yeah, but they didn't know into the DNA line. You know what I mean? They're related the way Earl's related to fucking Captain Crunch. You know what I mean? <laughs> Earl came back. My DNA said I'm related to the He's guy who played Ca Captain Crunch. <laughs> Earl, what are you in charge of tonight to make sure tomorrow's show goes perfectly? The, the cheese puffs and the pile. All right. <laughs> the pile has to be perfect for tomorrow. In case we want to restart a pile, Earl, you can't, you can't, you have to move this pile really delicately. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm... It doesn't have to stay that way. You can fucking just put you it in a Tupperware thing. It. You reform it tomorrow. You got nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, Why not just leave it? Double. You're worried that the uh, maintenance people will clean it up or something? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Of You're course. also worried that fucking Sam's going to eat it. If he comes in here. <laughs> Do, who's got the plug? It. We need a plug. <laughs> uh, Janelle Draper, Twisted Sisters, tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m., the Stan Comedy Club here in New York City. Janelle Draper, T.J. Miller, Bonnie McFarlane, many more, the stand, NYC.com for tickets. Wait, I am at the stand tomorrow night. You are? But I'm you not can on, drop in if you want. I'm, but aren't I, I guess I'm doing a different show, not yours. I don't know how this works out. Are you, you on a house show? Yeah, I mean, Patrick yeah. booked me. Okay, yeah, so mine's independently produced, so I book it, but you come do spot. I'd love to have you. I was actually emailing, I'm trying to get you some, for some time. I, I'm uh, supposed to go to the cellar, too. What time? Huh. We'll, we'll Sounds like everybody wants Ronnie B right now, huh? <laughs> yeah, who hey. does it? Everybody wants some! <laughs> you want some, too! <laughs> Why do I, oh, I have an idea. Why don't you put a post-it on the... Please don't touch. We yeah. need this for tomorrow. They Nothing can touch up. the pile. No, no, no. We don't fucking play those There's games here because this is a fucking dirty business, yeah. man. <laughs> this is <laughs> sad. Right. in their butt <laughs> <laughs> You don't just leave your fucking puffs Actually, around. You can't leave it around oh. these shock jocks. Was it you that was chewing on uh, pens? Yes, it was. So, uh, oh. Chris used to chew pens, right? <laughs> so, uh, fucking Jimmy stuck a couple of his buttholes and then fucking he, Chris chewed on the butt pens. But here's the <laughs> no. thing. When people called in and said, is Chris chewing on a pen? I'm like, yeah. And they go like this. Ah, Jimmy fucking put that up his ass. And Chris goes, I don't care. <laughs> no way. Which is really Tastes smart. Better. Yeah. Tastes better that way. Oh, I'm going to throw up. Why? I don't know. What do I Sounds like you don't eat ass, you know? I don't eat ass, but wow. I Wow. Really Go ahead and eat my dude. That's all Earl eats. <laughs> I'll do food <laughs> in the butt, but no, no eating. Um, Would you put a finger in a guy's butt? Oh, totally. Put one in Earl's. Okay. He likes yeah, it. Yeah, I don't want to cheat. Earl's um, never, you said you won't eat ass and you'll never be on, and you won't have your ass eaten, right? Yes. What about a cheese puff? One quarter inch up your ass, the rest sticking out. <laughs> and then that have that, so have Girl, Chris eat I'm not even going to feel mm -hmm. that, dude. Yeah, Give me yeah. a taste for once. I mean, at first well, you will. Will it be pre-cheese <laughs> or post-cheese? That's what I got to know. That's a smart, that's post. a smart question. Post. We got to do something with this. By the so, way. It's going to be not as lubricated. If you get the cheese, it makes it a little Peter, easier. Peter, who are you talking to on the phone? The probably, one in, probably somebody from booking. What is it? Mom. It was about a booking I brought up to you yesterday, a, produ a cinematographer. Oh. Cinematographer? Oh, Barry Sonnefeld? Yeah, um, but it, it was, it's it's not going to be for like a month or so, but you will get the book. 
I'm going to get the book in a month? No, you're going to get the book ahead of time, but he's not coming. He almost was coming in tomorrow, and then it got pushed back. There's... There's what the fuck happens in there, Vito? It's starting to sound crazy. <laughs> Should I give this over to Earl? No. Because let me tell you something about Earl. Earl stays as fucking cool as the other side of the pillow. I can always oh. count on him to be cool. I love the other side of the pillow. It's a good, another good thing. You guys are good at analogies. You, my, you know my nickname for Earl is? Dr. Dre. And it looks like this time you forgot about Dre. Mm -hmm. You want Earl to call booking? No, I don't. Or that would be a disaster. <laughs> By the way... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want you to write a letter to the bosses mm -hmm. about a certain booker and how great they were to take care of us when it was about something else. Yes, I will. And then I also want to get like a food present for that booker. Okay, I'm, I'm finding we, out what they like. What do you mean you're finding out what they like? That's the <laughs> exact like opposite of what do. How are you going to find out what they like? Ask their coworkers. Then it'll get back to them. No. It won't get back to them. Okay. You stay out of it. If I'm you out end of it, up Ron. giving this person these discarded cheese puffs, I'm I, I, these are both are mine. I'm I, friends I, with this person. I, I take I, fitness Chris, classes. Are you okay? okay. There's a lot of cheese in You're my. You're very, butt. very white right now. <laughs> I know. It's not good. His color has changed, right? We gotta go. What? Ten plug. seconds. Yeah, we gotta go. Plug. Twisted sisters, go to thestandnyc.com. Uh, Janelle Draper, thanks so much. Peace.